Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, Nick Mason. Well, boys from the bush, and we're back in town. Remember that song? Something, something, something. Like it. Back down exactly, that's right. You've been yeah. on a little holiday. I've been on the a bush. little holiday. I down was. the river? I was in a river, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. Yeah. Just having the, the water washing over you, just yep. no, no, not a worry in the world, except drowning. Well, there was a moment when my daughter fell in the river. Oh, no. But luckily, somebody else got her out of the river who was you, closer. You were too far away. <laughs> I was too far away. And also, bear in mind, if she's listening to this in the future, this person said that she was watching her. So I was like, okay. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. All right. So it was the other person's fault. Yes. Also, she didn't go under. It wasn't deep enough. It was just cold. Okay, so right. this, so this, when this comes out in my divorce. Sure, hearing, sure, sure. Yeah. This will all be evidence used to exonerate me. By I think so too. Yes. Terrific. Uh, speaking of divorce, uh, thank you to those who attended my wife's first show in London. Uh, she's currently on tour. That's right. With album address. And so I'll do some dates later for what we're reading. Uh, but before we do that, Mason. Hello. We've got to talk so many big things this, this week. big news happened. This is right a... when you went on holiday. What? Go on holiday again. More big news will break. Yeah, yeah. I think there might off be, you Mason. Off your trot. Get back in the river. Right now. <laughs> I wasn't in the river. Mm. Put my daughter back in the river. Put your daughter back in the river. <laughs> Terrific. It's, this is, how, you know, how a lot of, like, athletes and stuff. Yeah. They're you know, like us, like elite athletes. They yeah, like a, us, yeah. They have a little uh, good luck charm, a little superstition before the game. They're like, mm. they'll put on the... Their special underpants or what have you. Oh, yeah. Yours, I think, is dunk your daughter in a river. <laughs> and then we get this sweet content. That's right, like a tea bag, like yeah. a magic tea bag. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm. Like a screaming tea bag. Like a screaming tea bag. <laughs> anyway, none, wait, of, none wait, of this is admissible. That's true. It's all sarcasm. Also, great name for a punk band, I think, the screaming tea bags. <laughs> Anyways, Mason, news of the week. Oh, yes. We're going to do some more delays due to the writer's strike. We're Mm -hmm. going to talk big updates on one of Netflix's finest, some casting for Superman Legacy. It's been locked in. Comic-Con woes. Trailers ahoy for Dune Part 2. Tom Cruise is out and about, as you might be He's in Australia right now. He's in Australia right now. That's right. Not not in Melbourne. He's in not, Sydney. Not yet. I think they're probably just going to do Sydney. They don't Melbourne. come to Melbourne, Mason. Mm, maybe when Ro- too far. maybe when Rove Live was yeah, filming. Yeah, yeah. Not anymore. That's, well, Rove met him. Yeah, that's right. Didn't exactly. Invite us. I noticed. I'm fucking believable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah, then say hi to your mum for me. <laughs> and then we're going to get into Indiana Jones. I bet it's because they go the, the stars are given the itinerary and they go. Is this the title of Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones and all the things that you're yes, saying. Yes, exactly right. <laughs> I, I bet the I bet like your Tom Cruises and so forth. They get given the itinerary for the journey and they're like, okay, well it's fourteen hours to Melbourne, but it's thirteen hours and fifteen minutes to Sydney. And they're yeah. like, well, let's just go to Sydney. Then. Great, I'll run off the plane. <laughs> That's right. How much time does that take? Uh, and yeah, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which is the big movie everybody's always talking about. That's right. F- for this weekend. We'll never stop talking about it until next week when we maybe <laughs> will briefly mention it again. Yep. Like some subsequent thoughts or like, you we'll know, talk about the end of the year when they're like, oh yeah, yeah. we saw that. Mm. They came out this year. That's right. Along with other movies that came out. Mm. Anyways, there are time codes below which Collings who edits this put in if you do want to jump to anything in particular. But we're going to start with the death of a legend in oh, Alan Arkin. That's right. Very sad. Mason. One of the yeah. great character actors, I think. Absolutely. 50-year career at least, I Incredible. would say. Incredible. I mean, I saw a picture of him with hair and I'm like, wow, I, I had no <laughs> idea. Like he's been around forever. He's been around since Alan Arkin had hair. That's right. You know what I mean? Born in 1934, so yeah. that's what we're talking about That's here. right. Uh, I reckon people would remember him. Uh, our listeners probably remember from Little Miss Sunshine. Yep. He's uh, got a, gra- a bunch of great scenes in that. Abigail Breslin has a really nice story about working with him. Mm. She posted to social media and whatnot. Yeah. Are you going to relay it here? I wasn't there. It's not my story to tell. Mason. Okay, well, then you should probably go to her in, uh, Instagram. <laughs> uh, he, he was in Argo. Yep. He's great in Argo. He's in a great movie from the 70s called The In-Laws with uh, Peter Falk. It's a good movie. Yeah, right, yeah. But but he was also in the movie Catch-22. Like, I'll see if I can find this. Yeah. He was in Catch-22. I haven't seen that movie. I've seen the new series. Maybe I'll watch that one. Mm. Mm. He was in Catch-22 and Mad Magazine did a parody of it. I think it was called Catch-All-22. Nice. Oh, here it, yeah, absolutely it was. So, and, but he wrote in to Mad Magazine. He wrote, I was struck deeply by the richness of your Catch-All-22 piece. The beauty of the artwork and the sensitivity of the prose merged into a fine and vivid tapestry. The only criticism I had was your occasional attempt at humour, but it was so slight that it didn't really affect the main fabric of the piece. <laughs> With admiration, Alan Arkin. <laughs> Very good. Mm. 
Gross Point Blank. That's right. It was in mm. the Rocketeer. Yeah, which is a lot of fun if you've ever seen. If you're looking for an Indiana Jones esque romp, then the watch Rocketeer. the Dial of Destiny. Watch the Dial of Destiny. Obviously, mm. rush to cinemas. And then watch Captain America. <laughs> you don't really one. have to rush to cinemas. I mean, you have to rush to cinemas in the sense that you won't be able to watch it in like three weeks. No. Well, you should, like, because if, if you want to watch it, you're an old man. So go as fast as you can. As to you cinemas. can safely. Go <laughs> yeah. as fast as you can safely. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, get one of your family members to drive you to if the cinema. Could, you could get an escort. That would yeah. be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he, was in, he was really funny and get, get, your, get, your, get, a, get one of your children to navigate the online purchasing of a ticket. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it was really funny in Get Smart, which mm. is an okay movie, but he he was great in. Uh, and Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, of course. Right. So, yeah, just incredible roles all around. Great innings and fantastic career. Mm-hmm. Apparently a very nice bloke. So, yeah. According to Abigail Breslin. Yeah. If and, she's ever going to tell us that story. And nobody else. That's right. Stone cold silence from the rest of the cast of Little Miss Sunshine. That's right. I assume. What's what's Dano got to say about this? What's Steve Carell got to say about this? What do you got to say? Probably probably similar nice story. Is he in that movie? Steve Carell? Yeah. Yes. He's the dad. I thought it was no, it's it's Greg Kinnear, isn't it? No. It's Steve Little Miss Car- Sunshine. Yes, it's Steve Carell. You're thinking of the movie Mystery Men. No, you're thinking of the movie Get Smart. I fucking is him. They're in both it. in it. Yeah. But he, Greg Kinnear's the dad, though, right? So who's Steve Carell? Maybe he's the uncle. I can't remember. Oh, my God. Wow. Mm. It's very indie, just looking at these images. It's extremely, <laughs> extremely twee indie from that era. <laughs> my goodness. Anyways, yes. uh, we've we got to move it along. And we're going to talk about delays, but it's good because pay your writers money. If you wouldn't mind. Uh, there might be an actor strike. That's right, going to talk yeah. about this week, mm-hmm. early days, obviously. Now, I, we like to bring this up most weeks just to let people know that the reason why there is a delay and there's going to be a slew of absolute junk, junk content over the <laughs> next year is because people aren't being paid properly. That's right. And I know some people might say, well, actually, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Mm. But just pay people the money, you know, that they can live with. Also, there's no valid points in what you just said then. Exactly. You just said whatever, It whatever. wouldn't even make any sense. Try to think of a coherent point if you're going to God. come at us. If you're going to come at us as an obvious straw man that we've made up, <laughs> if you could at least say some things <laughs> in that sentence. But you didn't, did you? <laughs> and that's typical of you. QED, we've got him. We've absolutely got him there. So Eric Kripke gave an update on The Boys mm. Season 4. And he wrote uh, on Twitter, Update 1. When Season 4 drops depends on how long the hashtag WGA strike goes. No answer yet. Tell the studios to make a fair deal. So a fan asks, how did this? How is the show affected seeing it's already been filmed and the production is wrapped? And Kripke revealed that there's a good amount of dialogue where, which we write in post that the actors come back to record called ADR to help bridge story gaps or clarify plot points. So he stressed that writing must be at every stage of the process. Mm. And that is true. There's not just a script and it's locked in. Again, That's we've true. talked about this. There's rewrites on the day. There's improvised mm. things, as mentioned. There's ADR. There'd be a lot of cut to news reports and... Yep. Etc. Exactly. A rude thing happened on the boys. <laughs> Very rude. This is the rudest thing the boys have done yet. <laughs> anyway, you can use that if you want. That's fine. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We we're don't not, mind. We're not bound by the the, the, the WGA, so you can use that. We'll scab for you. Yeah. Someone. It was. It was gross too. Yeah. That's right. Somebody exploded. It was that's gross. Right. Some went in an orifice, <laughs> but not the one you're thinking. A, a new and different one. You haven't seen this on the show yet. But boy, was it rude. <laughs> Stuff should be going out of that, not into it. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yuck. Yeah. Mm. Makes good TV, though. Boy, does it. Mm. I was speaking uh, of. I was going to say, uh, uh, before I forget, also according to different sources, Deadpool 3 is either finished or it's not finished yet. I like they know. just knocked it I mean, out in a week. they moved it forward. Yeah. So, I, so don't, I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the plan is there, but everything worked out fine the last time. A Deadpool movie <laughs> happened during the writer's strike. Yeah. Scott from NerdSync did a video on that as well. All right. Like in relation to Deadpool and the writer's strike and all that if you're interested. Uh, but anyway, Mason, what we have to do right now, and you're yes. going to hate this, we're going to have to put down our phones and stop watching the movie Red Notice. Oh, which well, come on. Which we're both watching on separate devices and on this television <laughs> in this right. room. Yeah. And on the fridge. Yeah. We put it up on the fridge. Just for a second, but good news, it's because Red Notice 2 may be on the way. Yes. Now, as people know, redder still. <laughs> this is the damn. This red notice is even redder. <laughs> that must mean we're in more trouble, and we need more celebrity cameos. Woo! 
So as people may be aware, mm-hmm. Red Notice is touted as the thing that has been watched more than anything else mm. ever. That's right. And we know that's true. Absolutely. Uh, why would why would a streaming service which relies on it concealing its viewing numbers lie to us about yep. any streaming numbers? And also to also boost their numbers but also not pay people. We've mm. talked it's that weird yeah. line. It is. Oh, you it? heard about Squid Game this week. So the guy who made Squid Game just didn't get paid like residuals. Like yeah, he barely yeah. got paid anything. Because he was in the position where he had that idea and, yeah. and they were like We we want that. Yeah, we'll take that, but also in order to put it up and get it made, we're not gonna pay you and it's it made them nine hundred million dollars, by yeah, the way. Right, yeah. Right. Mm. So yeah, you know, whatever. Well, it's fine. He doesn't need any of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they will make the reality TV version. Yes. Because it's cheaper. Because it's way they don't, cheaper. They don't need anybody to write anything. That's right, yeah. And if you just get everybody to sign waivers, you can kill them. It's fine. <laughs> That's right. Collida spoke with Gal Gadot mm. and she said, we're talking about it, Red Notice 2. Oh, yeah. No doubt. I don't know if I can say anything. I already read the second script and it's woo. <laughs> we're all very excited about it, aren't we? I don't she think means she... us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all very excited. <laughs> we were in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're very excited. Thank you. Yeah, so there you go. Now, as someone who has watched Red Notice, yep. you, both of us have. I You've just never watched it. I haven't. <laughs> I want to. Yeah. I really want to, Mason. <laughs> I, I, just, I, I want to. But what happens is you go to Netflix and you like click on Red Notice and it's like, sorry, too many people watching it currently. <laughs> Try back again in 30 minutes. It's like getting Taylor Swift tickets. Exactly. Watching Red Notice. Get in line. How was this in terms of sequels? Did the characters of Red and Notice... Like, do you feel like they're... Oh, I'm sure that, like, um, you know, it, it was very built from the ground up around the idea of, well, you know, the, the next adventure's on the way. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there wouldn't be a problem Who did there. they run into at the end to tell them there's a next adventure on the oh, way? Oh, they didn't, but it was just, if if I can spoil the plot of Red Notice, and obviously I can because everyone's seen it <laughs> so, multiple times, if I recall... The the I, the reveal was even though it looked like there were three independent operators, the Rock and Gal Gadot's characters are married, I think. Oh, and then it's, so so they were actually working together. It was like the movie Maverick, the movie where the two Mavericks in it were actually father and son Mavericks. That's right, Mel Gibson mm-hmm. and James um, yeah, 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 yeah. Maverick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right, James Garner. Yes, wow. They took the Maverick movie twist? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they great. said it at the time. Ryan Reynolds was like, "This is a very Maverick movie twist." Wink. So does. <laughs> This does, is so maverick. Does Ryan Reynolds, so do you think in a new movie, Ryan Reynolds will also have a wife? He or might whatever? have a wife. We could get a wife in. Damn, that's crazy. Is actual, we could get Blake Lively. Actual oh, yeah. wife. Actual wife, yeah. That could work. Right. Great. Well, this sounds exciting. Yeah. Not as exciting as this, though. Go on. Superman legacy casting announcement. Ooh, two big confirmations. This is very exciting. That's right. Uh, David Corrinsweet. We're assuming that's how it's pronounced. Yep, until he, pro- uh, until he pronounces it a different way. Mm. He's going to be Clark Kent slash kal slash Superman. Mm. And Rachel Brosnahan. That's correct. As Lois Lane. Now, uh, uh, they've both been on House of Cards, which is interesting. Sure. I don't know a lot about David Corrinsweet. He's in Pearl, which is the... the yeah. um, the X prequel, X, yes. Yeah. Rachel Brosnahan, people will know, obviously, is Midge Maisel, uh, mm. uh, aspiring uh, housewife and aspiring stand-up comedian yep. in uh, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. But uh, our listeners will probably better know, uh, know her as that woman who wouldn't give up that gosh darn golden arm. <laughs> in, the, in, that, in the episode, the golden arm of whatever that Quibi series was. That's right. She just wouldn't give up that arm. You thought it was the woman from Westworld, but it wasn't. It was that's, this woman. That's right. It's a different woman. <laughs> yeah. She's in that. 50, 50, 50 States of Fright is what that's it was right. called. The uh, the Quibi series that promised to do 50 horror stories in one in each state of America, but did like two. I loved it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Genuinely. Sam yeah. Raimi directed it. Yeah, yeah. But it's interesting that they uh, both of these actors have been in – sort of period movies, yeah. like, you know, set in the past. So they've got I, – I imagine they got st- screen tested for, like, modern day, but also, like, what if we give them a little retro look? What if we give them, like, yeah. a golden age Superman and Lois Lane look and see yeah. how, how that works out? I think there might be a bit of that. Mm. Um, James Gunn has taken to Twitter and he said, accurate, they are not only both incredible actors but also wonderful people. Now, apparently they beat out the likes of Nicholas Holt and Tom Brittany mm. plus Emma Mackey and Phoebe uh, Dynava. Okay. Some of those names I know and some I do not. Yes. So we've got another British Superman and a criticism has been, well, is this he British? Guy, I believe so, isn't he? No, he's he? American. Well, we've got another American Superman. <laughs> okay, great. Just like Christopher Reeve. Yep, he's who, American. Who I think is American and not Canadian. Is mm-hmm. he? I thought yes. I just th- assumed with that name he was British. He was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Whoa. He was born with a Philly cheesesteak by his side. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. That's great. Yeah. You lie a baby on it and you keep them warm. That's right. Like the steak and the baby. That's right. Yeah. Uh, graduated from Juilliard. That's not bad. Yep. 
Okay. Do you think he's too skinny? I know you said that. I never said that, but also <laughs> people remember HGH exists. By that I mean natural, natural working out, all That's right. natty. All natty. That's all how they the all do it. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I mean, I, again, I don't really know much about him, but I like the idea of bringing in somebody who's not a, not super well known as mm-hmm. Superman. Yep. But if, you know, if, if they say that he can embody this character and whatever, whatever, then great, <laughs> which was the official statement. He That's can embody, right. embody this character, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. whatever. <laughs> uh, apparently two scars guards also might be up the, for the role of Lex Luthor. Which ones? The <laughs> father and son. Great. What do you think of that? But there's a bunch Stellan. of fathers and star- sons, aren't there? But of of scars guards. Yes, is there? Is there? Well, there's. Oh, there's Bill. Yes. Has he got a brother? He probably has a brother, right? Aren't they all? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. How many of these scars guards are actually related, and how many are not related? I think they're all related. So Stellan scars guards. Yeah, Stellan scars guards. The dad. Yes. Has he got a brother? He's the one in um Rogue One prequel. Yes. yes. Yeah. Hang on, let me check. Okay. Brother. Oh, it's brother. interesting. Nicholas Holt has missed out on Batman and Superman. Yeah. Well, he might be Batman. Oh yeah, no, that's true. It's, yeah, we don't be, we don't know yeah. for sure yet, do we? I yeah. guess, yeah. Mm, no, he's I not the know. Batman, but he could be a Batman. Yeah, absolutely. Nicholas Holt is a Batman. A Batman. <laughs> so yeah, Ale- apparently Alexander and Bill. So okay, one was Tarzan, and recently mm-hmm. in Succession, mm-hmm. one was the clown from It. That's right. I think either of those are great choices. Yeah. You know, that's fine. Mm. I want to. I like a big Lex Luthor. Yeah, Give me sure. a big one. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, yeah, <laughs> that's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, someone who's like formidable. Mm. I like that idea a lot. So, yeah. you know, Jesse Eisenberg, it might, might have been your favourite Lex Luthor, but I think they could have taken that in a different direction, and now they can. That is perfect. Yeah. That's great. There you go. I'm still holding out hope for Dave Bautista as Dr. Hugo Strange. I, think I, think, be, I like that. That would be cool. I would be shocked if he does not appear in, mm. this, in the DCU, Mason, yeah. as a character. Unless he's already appeared. Let me think. Is he in the Suicide Squad? No, he was going to be, but then mm. he got... Glass Onion? No, I think he got... Um, it was either that... I think he did the Snyder movie instead. Okay. Oh, okay. Army of the Dead. Yeah, but he was going to be in it. All right. So, yeah. There Terrific. you bloody go. Yeah, mate. right. Bloody go. Again. Yeah, yeah, you go again. Yeah, there I go again. Well, it's not every day we get a new Superman. The last time was like 2011. So, well, for movies, I should mm. say. But, you know. So and I is... said at the time, too skinny. Did you? Yep. And he was right. Yep, that's right. He was right, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, no matter how far that, that Henry Cavill bulks up, he'll never be he'll never be thick enough for me with two Cs. You watching the the Witcher season three? Nope. Everyone hates it, mate. Do they really? Apparently. I don't know. I didn't watch the end yeah. of season one or okay. season two. Yeah. I mean, I guess they're in a position where obviously that version of the character is not going to exist in the next season. It's going to be Liam Hemsworth. Apparently there's going to be a uh, in-universe reason why he looks different. Oh, some sort of snake oil potion Yeah, like or a jar of acid gets thrown at him. Yeah, and, right. And he gets a witch shoots him in mm. the face and whatever. Or he says, I wish I looked like Liam Hemsworth. <laughs> and the genie's like, I guess. I can make you Chris, but you've locked into it now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. That's fun. If it happens, they could cancel. Oh, it's not filming. <laughs> not currently, I okay, believe. Great. But okay. yeah, terrific. Any, well, because writer strike. Oh, yep. Mason. Hello. DC. Boom. As in the DC, you are also skipping Comic Con this year. That's right. Which makes DC, Marvel, Star Wars. Oh, I don't know. What probably this, Indiana Jones. <laughs> what is this Comic Con going to be about then? Comics. Yuck. Yucky. I'd rather not. Yeah. I'd rather not. Thank you. Yeah. No. No. No, sir. But you know that does it does leave the door open for announcements in you know maybe some image stuff maybe a new universe is starting yeah maybe the Miller World on Netflix maybe the Miller World will you know? will announce and cancel another thing yeah. Yeah, exactly there's always yeah. that opportunity so it's interesting that even though they've done this casting they're still not going like because they could be like here's your Superman and Lois or whatever that's true yeah but you know Ooh, I guess big finale for Superman and Lois did you did are you, are you I ha- I'm not up to date oh, that won't spoil it for you okay. Then. I need to watch that show right now. All right, Mason, let's, let's do let's it. Let's turn off. You know, let's not turn off Red Notice. That's right. Let's finish We've Red. We've got enough screens <laughs> that we can do all this. But give us a minute to think. We make this happen. We can we continue to watch Red Notice on all our screens and we can watch an additional thing. <laughs> uh, we'll switch the podcast off and that'll give us a screen there to watch. It'll give us the Superman juice. and Lois. Or we can watch Red Notice on a fourth uh, screen. That's a great point, actually. From the start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great. Trailers Ahoy, though. <laughs> Dune Part 2 has a That's right. second trailer. What am I doing? I don't know, but I liked it. Thanks. This one has Elvis in it. 
That's right. Yeah, that guy. Now he's a, a big bald white Elvis. Boy. Yeah, I mean, if you were, if you were questioning Austin, it's like fighting a sperm. Yeah, <laughs> sperm just one knife. big one. Yeah, flapping about. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were uh, if you were questioning Austin Butler's commitment to changing his look, if you're like, well, this guy's you know he's made it as a big sex symbol, he's Elvis and he's all yeah. this sort of stuff, he's not going to turn into a weird pale sperm freak. <laughs> well, he is. He did it. <laughs> what do you think of that? Too bad. Yeah, man. Uh, but it'd be funny if he was still doing the Elvis voice. <laughs> <laughs> he's just locked into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. cannot escape it. You watched that yet? No, I haven't. Yeah, me neither. Okay, great. Maybe one day. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, the, I mean, the trailer looks great. The spice must flow. <laughs> oh. I was going to say some things about his life which I don't like, yeah, but I, I don't need to. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to. People are filling those blanks if they want. <laughs> but, yeah, the trailer looks incredible. Mm. Um, so it's been a couple- I'm going to get you, Paul Atreides. <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> He's got his knife. I'm all shook up. That's right. And I'm going to get you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... The, the last one did okay. Mm. It also released to streaming at the same time, but it's still oh, that's got, right. it got a pretty good following. Mm. Cast is great. I mean, it's I thought it was terrific. Yeah. And the cast is great and continues to get even greater. Exactly. With the, the arrival of Christopher Walken mm-hmm. as the Emperor. That's right. Hello. He says. Hello. Yeah, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Hello. That's why Christopher Walken. Did you see? I saw this clip. It's been around for a while, but it, it was on Twitter recently. It was Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. Mm. He was on it. They were they were on SNL as the musical guest, and Christopher Walken was the host. Mm. And Christopher Walken comes up to him and asks him because he's got to introduce the musical act. He's like, "Where do you put where do you put the emphasis on the on the <laughs> on the band's name?" And so Dave Grohl was like, "Oh, you do it on Fighters." <laughs> and so Christopher, you watch the clip. Christopher Walken comes out. and He goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, Foo Fighters." <laughs> It's so good. Why, why would it, there doesn't even need to be any emphasis. There doesn't at all. You're absolutely right. They're just two separate words. <laughs> That's great. I mean, the scale of these movies looks, they Immense. look ridiculous. Mm. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to actually see this one in cinemas because we couldn't for the last one. But also the news was this week that Dune 3 is happening. That's right. There's going to be an adaptation of Dune Messiah. Oh. Now some of this yes. was adapted into the Children of Dune 2003 miniseries. Oh, Children of Dune. Children of Dune. That had James McAvoy. And, oh, James um, McAvoy. Now that's, I assume, I, haven't, I don't know anything about Dune Messiah. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's the, might be the one where Paul Atreides turns into a big worm. <laughs> Does that happen? Yeah, I think so. And he'll be like, he'd be like Zendaya. Would you still love me if I was I'm a worm? Because mm. I'm going to be a big worm. Oh, really? Maybe. Or his son becomes a worm. I'm not sure. Yuck. Yeah, well, I would say yuck. <laughs> no, thank you. But he's still got the hair. Mm, how much of it? Because he's got Just the same one wet strand. <laughs> no. Okay. He need, the worm has to have the whole hair. The, yeah, yeah, the hair has yeah. to grow to yeah, the same yeah, size. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Because these books get wild. So three is where it gets wild, do you think? I guess. I don't know. I, I only read the first Dune. Okay, so. great. Because obviously the first movie yes. is is the book split up into two, right? Yes, right. Yeah. But also Warner Brothers, they really need a win this year. I mean a lo- most of the companies, <laughs> Disney need a win, yeah. a bunch of them need a win. They need a win or they need a big enough loss to for them to realise that the, the idea, the strategy going forward is perhaps not – Make every movie three hundred million dollars. Mm, interesting, you know. Yeah, because then every movie doesn't tie. It, it doesn't tie the success of your movie with your business continuing to exist. Like it isn't that threat there anymore. Right. You know, yeah, if yeah. you just made some cheap movies. Sure. Yeah. Speaking of, did you you didn't watch No Hard Feelings yet? Which one's that? That's the Jennifer Lawrence. No, the, did you the see sex it? Comedy. You? I haven't seen it yet. But yeah. I'll, I'll, She's doing the rounds though. Doing the rounds. Doing the hot right. ones. Doing the hot whatever. ones. Yeah, yeah. I mm. yeah. mm. oh, did you have a follow up. Questions about that movie? No, I was just curious. But, I mean, that's just a, a, a lower budget, yeah. you know, movie such we don't see so much no more. I think it's doing okay for what yeah. it is, but comedies jet, comedies do not do well at that's the right. moment because mm. they mostly – it's that same thing of like the Pixar animated thing where people were just like, well, I'll watch this on streaming. Yeah. Why, why mm-hmm. go to the cinemas? That's you true. Know, and all of mm. that. Speaking of cinemas and yes. why you would go to them, mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, he's out and about and he's promoting – Movies in general. That's right. You seen those oh, pictures? We did. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, we had um, we had Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie yep. buying a bunch of tickets to the upcoming big blockbusters to Oppenheimer and. But uh, they Mission only did it because Tom Cruise did it. Oh, you think? I so? think you'll find Tom Cruise did it first. Tom Cruise did it first. Well, that's that's part of the course with Tom yeah. Cruise, isn't it? It's on his Twitter. Mm-hmm. If you can access it, 
This summer is full of amazing movies to see in theatres. Congratulations, Harrison Ford, on 40 Years of India, one of the most iconic characters in history. I love a double feature, and it doesn't get more explosive <laughs> or more pink than one with Oppenheimer and Barbie. I love The Flash also. He, he, didn't, does. Say, he didn't say that. But he said that in the past, so I think it's fair to tie it to this. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he should have stood in front of the poster with a ticket. That's right. And I know he's already seen it, but mm. you know he could have supported the movie The Flash. That's right. Which is yeah. a terrible movie. Anyway, it set off, a, a, as you said, he mm. started the trend and it set off a trend. And so we got we got, we got got Greta Gerwig and, and Margot Robbie in front of posters while buying their tickets, and that's a bit of fun. Yep. Uh, do you think we're going to get uh, Christopher Nolan and Killian Murphy no. just looking morose in front of Barbie? Absolutely not, no. It's a shame. I would love that. Yeah. If any of them were going to do it, I guess it'd be Killian Murphy. Mm. He seems like a normal guy. He does seem like a normal guy. I don't right? know whether that's true. Yeah. Maybe he's like a weird Daniel Day-Lewis guy where he's too normal, where mm. it's like you're too artisanal to be normal. Yeah, right. You know, you're all like, you would you make your own nails for your house or whatever yeah. he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know what he's doing. Yeah, he's up the bag. He's up the bag. He's got a some sort of furnace and he's <laughs> making batches of nails. He makes six nails a day. <laughs> he's building a house. Yeah, but yeah, he just seems like you see him in interviews. He's just like, yeah, yeah I don't know how I got here. I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, I did a couple of sad Irish movies and then all of a sudden I'm here. I yeah. don't know what happened. Yeah, there we go. But I also think this thing with Tom Cruise, like promoting other movies, this very transparently to me says that he's also getting his face out there for Mission Impossible. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think is going to be big. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, if off the back of the previous ones and Top Gun, and he is one of the few people in himself, which is like a, is like a known brand that he's people one of the last like at the moment. He's one of movie stars, yeah. Know? And not only like a movie star, but a movie star that has delivered mm. lately. Yeah. You know? And I know we've got like the mummy or whatever, but if you look at his track record, it's, it's been very good. So I think this just... This also serves as a way for him to promote himself, which I think is smart, mm. you know, and he's normal. And we both think he's we normal. We both think he's normal. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I feel I saw a tweet this week. It was about, I'll never find it, but it was about how um, the movie industry, you know, is is sort of in flux right now. Yeah. And this this upcoming slate of movies is sort of really important because if, if this stuff does well, mm. then it sort of, it proves to movie executives that that all this stuff is everything's going well because like barbie we've got an existing ip yep. that if if that does well it's like well you can just you can just make movies out of toys and stuff you can keep doing mario that. exact mario exactly if uh you apparently know, it's tracking well yeah, yeah if mission impossible does well it's like well then you can get a star in it and a star will yeah you know, do whatever so look i'll never find it but i uh, it, mm. it seems it seemed to make sense to me okay fair enough also i found that tweet uh, that was uh, we mentioned earlier. This is Mark Harris, who mm. I believe is an author, oh. and he said it's hard to overstate the degree to which Hollywood is now looking at three movies: Mission Impossible Seven, Barbie, and Oppenheimer, not only to succeed but to solve industry problems that no three films can solve. Mission Impossible Seven is for the movies are back baby crowd, mm. uh, the execs who've been waiting since Top Gun Maverick for the victory lap, and who are holding fast to the belief that franchises and stars, no matter how old or aging, are still a viable path forward. Okay. Right? Barbie is for people who believe that mining existing IP is a creative path as long as the talent is younger and the existing IP hasn't been overly exploited by movies already. Mm, or uh, underexploited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say. Yeah. And Oppenheimer is for the romantics, the people who want to believe that a studio handing a first-tier director a pile of money to take a, take a big adult crazy swing at something remains a chance worth taking. So there you go. Adult movie. Not an adult movie. Well, yeah. That would be number four, I assume. Mm, Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I think so But I think like some of the lessons in that might uh, askew, like that Tom Cruise thing that give an old guy money and whatever, whatever, that applies strictly to Tom Cruise. It does. Well, that's exactly (laughs) – but see, that's the thing. That's what I think is being said here. It's like they're clinging on to the idea that, yeah, you can just bring in a guy who everybody loves, but realistically you can't. It's Tom Cruise and no one else at this point. Who's left? Hulk Hogan? Yeah, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, bring Suburban Commando too. Let's make that happen. Santa with muscles too. Yeah, he's yeah. still got muscles. That's exactly right. Santa with slightly less muscles because he's much mm. older. But there was also, I think, some sort of maybe some sort of earnings call this week with Mattel or Hasbro or something like that yeah. where they're like, look at all the stuff we have and we can make a, a bloody... A Dungeons and Dragons movie. Yep, that worked. <laughs> but also, what about the Viewmaster movie? Wow. You, know? look well, you, you look through that. You yeah. see all sorts of... That's right. Just a picture. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Mate, now let's make that a movie. Let's make it a movie, baby. <laughs> My goodness. Mm. 
Mason. Hello. In the tradition of this guy you love, he's now old and he's in another movie. That's right. Comes Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. He's going to save movies. He's going to save movies. Mm. One movie at a time. That's right. Starting with this one, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. So on a budget of between $250 <laughs> to $295 million. Allegedly, but probably more. I reckon it's more. I think it's probably more. I know people have also justified this by saying... Uh, a number of things, including that it was filmed during the pandemic and obviously there was a, there's a big uptick in what everything costs mm. due to, you know, various things in place well, and whatnot. Well, guess what? I'm putting, a, I'm putting a moratorium on that. No, <laughs> mo- After this, no movies are allowed to say, well, we, mo- we made it in the pandemic. Yeah. We made it in the pandemic. That's why it's expensive. That's it. Too bad. We're drawing a line in the sand. That's right. Yeah. A dune-like and- line in the sand. Thank you. And it's also been said that they got like $50 million in tax cuts for filming in certain places or whatever. Mm. But even if you take all that into account, yeah. this is bad. So in the, <laughs> You're saying the, 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 the box office is oh, – well, the, the expenditure and also in relation to the box office is bad. Yes. Now, I'm going to – now, a bit later in this, I'm going to go into why specifically I think this is underperforming, mm. but we'll do a bit of the spoiler for yeah. you first. But I think it's interesting, and I think we've probably briefly touched on this before, but the reason that these movies is, these movies exist in the first place, the Indiana Jones franchise, is because when Lucas came off Star, Star Wars, the Star yeah. Wars, which yeah. was so expensive for the time, it made yeah. a lot of money, but, well, you know – Mind-bendingly expensive at the time. They went. Let's do. A, let's do a cheap one. Yeah. Let's do a thing that's just a funny little well, pulp adventure, it and was, it'll be on the cheap. It was more expensive than the first Star Wars, mm. but yeah. But the budget wasn't like it was big for the time, but it wasn't like astronomical. Yeah. It wasn't a huge swing. Well, this is astronomical yes. and a huge swing, and it. But that also paid off four times. That's true. Yeah. Even the bad one, yeah. the Last Crusade. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. So the U.S. Weekend opening weekend for this was sixty million dollars and seventy million international, and I can't stress enough that is bad. Mm. I mean that like the Flash was bad. This is probably worse than the Flash because the budget is probably more. Yeah, but it's it's all bad. Mm. Like I mean, we don't really know what any of these are worth, but it's bad. It basically. seems bad. Yeah. Anyways, what do you think the story was? Oh right, well it's the sixties. Yeah, uh, that and that's groovy, baby. For some. It's very groovy for some, less groovy for others. Yeah. It's not groovy for Professor Henry Jones Jr. Because nope. he's all like, I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad. I'm alone and I live in a little apartment and I'm, I go to work and everybody's like, hey, daddy-o. <laughs> hey, hip cat. That's right. And I'm like, shut up. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't like it. <laughs> I just want to kill. <laughs> I just want to go out in the field and kill. It's my favourite thing to do. But nah, but uh, but uh, guess what? Uh, what? Stuff, stuff from his past is going to re-emerge. Yeah. He's going to go on an adventure, one last adventure, one That's last right. time. That's right. Think about that. And that stuff, it's Nazis. Yep. Yeah, there's a there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, they're all running about. It's actually a, a bad thing to do. I'm gonna <laughs> Run <my> about? F- <laughs> no, is that's not fine. Safe? Okay, it right. It depends what you're doing. Mm. Running about in itself, the, the idea of that. What I about like. I'm running around with an open pair of scissors? Where are you running? Uh, in the house? That's fine. Outside? That's fine. I'm a Nazi? That's not fine. But I don't have the scissors. That's fine. <laughs> but you can't be a Nazi. Okay, all right. All right, anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, go, the little little adventure is uh, is on the way. Yeah. A big adventure. So how do you how do you feel about this one? I liked it. I, I liked... We've had some distance, by the way. Yeah. We watched this last, so, like, more than a week ago, I think. Mm. Uh, and uh, you've since been on holiday. Mm-hmm. And I've since stayed home and stewed on it. Yep. And, uh, and look... We I were, also stewed on it. Look, we were, we were, you know, some might say we were lured by the the uh, incredible, the lavish <laughs> opening, you know, we, we got we got premiere tickets. Yeah, there was boy, a man. There was a man there named, like, Whippy Whipperson or something, and he <laughs> did a bunch of whip tricks. And you might think... While we <laughs> waited out in the cold. Yeah, how long did he whip for? Probably about 30 minutes. <laughs> And let me tell you, yeah. 20 seconds in, you see everything that... <laughs> you got it. You yeah, got you it. Got he's it. good at it. He's, he's, not, he's, not, he's w- one of the best, so One of the said. best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and did he just have one whip? No. Let me tell you, that absolutely did me no favours going into this. <laughs> you sure? Because I was... I mean, there was a limited amount of whips in this, but I think if there had have been slightly more, I would have been like, I've had my fill of whipping. Right? We did 30 minutes of whipping and now he's whipped twice in this movie. Yeah, there was not yeah. as, as many whips as you... But I think that, you know, the... um. We have to contend with that Indiana Jones in this. He's he's getting on in years, and he's not as he's he's obvi- They've obviously gone. Well, we can't have him. No, we can't have him whipping and, and leaping the, and the single kind of big whip that he does. Mm-hmm. 
it doesn't even look like it's him. Right. It looks like it's either a stunt double with his uh-huh. face on it yeah. or it's just completely CGI. Mm-hmm. And there's a few moments in that which, yeah. quite frankly, I did not enjoy. All right. So the things about, thing about this movie I, I liked, and I'm sure there were people who disagree with me. Oh, by the way, it's not great. Okay, I just right. want uh-huh. to clarify that. Uh-huh. But that I feel like it doesn't feel rushed in a way that like the rise of Skywalker was. And I was mm. listening to, to an interview with James Mangold on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast. And he said, at least it's better than the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> I can die happy. <laughs> and he's right. Mm. And, and basically this was kind of treading water. Spielberg didn't want to do it. Harrison mm. Ford knows James Mangold who directed like Logan and 310 to Yuma, which is incredible by the mm. way if you haven't mm-hmm. seen it, Ford versus Ferrari. And so Harrison Ford and Lucasfilm brought him in and they said, listen, we kind of need to be ready to get this going in 25 days. Here's right. the script. And James Mangold looked at it and went, I mean, this has like the elements of, Indi- of an Indiana Jones movie. Right. But this isn't about anything. And right. I need a year okay. to fix this. And they went, no. What about $10 million <laughs> to you personally? And he went, I'll see you in 24 days. <laughs> I'll see you in 24 hours. Um, but he, he said no. Right. So he went away mm-hmm. and then they came back and said, we thought about it, or I guess they asked a bunch of people, right. and they went, "I guess we'll we'll do this properly." Uh-huh. No, I think the argument could be made. We don't want to, to be clear. Yeah, we would never do it properly if we didn't have to. I think the argument could be made that like this is maybe on par with some of like you might feel that it's on par with like the the worst kind of Disney Lucasfilm stuff. Okay, but I think what gets this over the line for me is the character beats of this mm. really resonated. Well, that's right. And, and this mm. this this movie goes some places you you I did not expect. First of all, full frontal Harrison Ford nudity. <laughs> oh yeah, but they do the de aging on it, so it's fine. <laughs> I don't think they do. Oh no! <laughs> well, then then he's doing great, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, no, he looks he looks amazing. Mm. But I think they really they lean into his age in terms of like. It's a bit kind of muddled in terms of the things he is and is not capable of. Right, uh-huh. There are moments where he pauses and he's like, my shoulder's hurt or whatever. And there's other moments where he would just jump from vehicle to vehicle. Yeah, or he'll get shot. Or he'll get shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, damn, kids. <laughs> yeah. This isn't groovy at all. So there's moments like that which – which, but I, I think the weakest element of this for me mm-hmm. is the action is kind of <laughs> – You know, I – I think is it is it partly the way that it's shot? It's all these medium shots. And I think so. But the, I feel like there was some there was some genuine. I, I I feel like there was some genuine like a real sense of motion and impact. And I felt like you know there's a little sort of so they're not tuk tuks. There was a little like yeah that little, was all right. Little little mo- like a little motor buggy chase. And I thought yeah. that the initial train chase was also very good. Yeah. So the first twenty five minutes of this movie. Mm-hmm. Has a, a de-aged Indiana Jones. That's right, and it's like in his heyday. It's no, nine... it's a de-aged Harrison Ford. It's an age that he was. That's true, Indiana Jones. So he would have been. I'm get the character would have been like forty six ish uh-huh. years yeah, old yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so he looks pretty much like he does in in the Last Crusade, yes. even though it's like six years after or five years after or whatever. And some of it looks amazing. Mm. Some of the times when he's not moving, yes, and it's just his face still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he looks incredible. And other the other times, it looks like a cartoon man just fucking mugging about. Right. And it, I had to like kind of tell my brain, just mm. don't just. This is upsetting you, and you need yeah. to just. This is happening, and you need to just. But once again, you're it. an empath, James. I am an empath. It was firmly established. I'm not as affected by this sort of thing. It seems as as you yeah. are. I think. Although although it, I think. I have been in the past, so I think it depends project to project. Uh, With the Indiana Jones stuff, I didn't mind it. It depends shot to shot. There's also a moment later in this where he's de-aged to like Crystal Skull era, and that Mm. looks way better to me. Right, And I think it's also because he looks closer to that in real life. Right. So uh that's an easier step than doing, you know, 30-odd years, Mm. taking 30-odd years off him. And I think also the the fact that like – it's a very difficult thing to do because it's a mix of like body doubles. I think there's mm. deep fakes. I think there's moments where he just has a CGI face and head. Mm. And also you've got a variety of light. Uh, do you think they made him do the dots? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't think it was even him a lot of the time. Right, I think uh-huh. it was a stunt double for yeah, yeah. a lot of it. But there's also a variety of like lighting and movement in it, which you often don't get with deep fakes. Often you're in a very controlled environment. Like yeah. with the last time we saw young Luke Skywalker. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. this was on like Corridor Crew. Yeah. It's all very carefully lit and shadowed yeah, to be yeah. even and flat so you can control mm. that. There was a lot of rubber masking as well, I think. Yeah, definitely. Did, did you see that? It came up on Twitter recently. Yeah, well, the, like the stunt guys just wearing like an old Indiana yeah, Jones yeah, head yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
So I think it's a, this is a very difficult like thing to pull off convincingly. Mm. And I think at the end I just kind of had to go with it. But I think as a classic Indiana you Jones. You could have left. I could have. No, I mean I think as a classic like little Indiana Jones throwback adventure, uh-huh. like it's got fun little moments and he's hiding and punching and little jokes and whatever. <laughs> yes. uh-huh. and, and I think it's – it's all right. Yes. I, I'm okay with it. I didn't love it. Were you at least, were you, um, did you, did you feel the dissonance? And again, I didn't really, but y- you might have the dissonance between a young Indiana Jones face and old Harrison Ford voice. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah okay. And I also don't know, like some of this was probably voice doubles or that AI thing. Yeah. Like I thought some of the line delivery like felt weird. He didn't talk that much, uh-huh. um, which was, but no, did you feel that? Or? No, I didn't. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I, I also feel like... I don't know how they did it exactly. But no, yeah. exactly, yeah. And we'll never know because Disney aren't, aren't doing many behind-the-scenes things. No, so they refuse. Just, just Disney magic, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather old Harrison Ford voice than getting a new guy in, I think. Yeah, okay, uh, and like an impression. Kind yeah, of, yeah, 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 yeah. fair enough. Mm. Uh, and what about or, or AI, like the AI Luke Skywalker? No. He's like, hello, Grogu, do a flip with me. That's all right. Oh, he'd good flip. <laughs> Now let's do flips across the galaxy. <laughs> hand in hand. Everything's very normal. Yeah. A series of a bunch of us is going to be very good and normal. <laughs> We're all going to team up. It's going to be very good and normal. Absolutely. And hey, look, it's my sister. She's here too. Yes, it's me, Princess Leia. I'm doing flips. It's good and normal. <laughs> I'm alive. Mm, that's right. As I would be in this era. It's not ghoulish. <laughs> it's normal. It's ghoulish and everybody approves. Mm, yeah. I'm young Han Solo. <laughs> So I also think there's a moment and there's a clip of this online. Mm. I liked kind of the evolution of Indiana Jones because at the start he's old. Uh-huh. And I know people hate the – some people hate the – like the old Luke Skywalker, Last Jedi thing. Mm. And it's a similar kind of – Yeah, this is, a, this is, a, this mm. is an Indiana Jones and he's an old man full of regret kind but of I, thing. But I, I like that because mm. like he's 80. I mean he's supposed to be like 70. That's right. canonically his age. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to see a guy – I mean, I think, and I think the complaints would be the same, like coming in and just doing all the things he used to do, except mm-hmm. he's eighty. Yeah, because I think also people, the Irishman, would, the yes, exactly. Mm. I think people would also not like that yes. for for the same reasons why they might not like this. I I like like this is his last adventure. It's the end of his life. Mm. There's a lot of the, <laughs> who are you talking about there? <laughs> this is me. Okay, <laughs> no, this is Harrison Ford and Indiana yeah, Jones. Right, right, right. And I think. That that's interesting. Mm. Like this guy, and you know, we'll get into the spoilers about why he is right. the way he is and where he is. Mm. Space, out of space, out of space. Yeah, that that is interesting to me. I know that's not interesting to everybody. Some mm. people hate that. They just want to see the guy that they used to know come in and go. And someone pulls a knife and he shoots them or whatever. Right, exactly. I know, but I don't. And that happens a hundred times yeah. in this movie, and I got sick of it. And I'm glad they just did it. Just a montage of him shooting people throughout the ages. <laughs> World War Two, bang. <laughs> 1950s, bang. <laughs> JFK, bang. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He admitted it. Um, because people would, I, you know, and I, I'm sure some people are uh, dismayed because in the last one, Indy kind of, you know, wh- whatever you think about that movie, he got what, you know, he got a happy he ending. He got what he deserved. He got what he deserved. <laughs> a kid and he's married now. Yeah. And it's sort of, you know, and he, but, but, um, I don't know, but he, but again, he didn't give up the hat, if you recall, no. in that last movie. So there were more adventures to come, I guess. And I think maybe, perhaps some people were expecting Indian mutt adventures or no. I mean, nobody was expecting I that. don't want that. No, we'll talk was. about it in yeah, spoilers. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, to to move it on to, again, the thing that people didn't like about Luke Skywalker, that mm. he was, you know, he was old and disillusioned and he can't do everything he used to be able to do. He didn't even do a flip. Didn't even do any flips, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, people are going to have an issue with that. But, I, yeah, you, I... I don't know. I don't know what anybody like. There's only so many times you can give him one more adventure. Yes, and you're right. It, you wouldn't be able to go. Yeah, no, he can. He's going to do exactly what he always did, and just nonstop CGI leaping and, yep. and shooting. Yep, you just can't do it. Exactly. Yeah, but look, and I, I, I realize that there probably be people who hear this and and being like, well, like all of these, I like I maybe sound conflicted about this movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. Okay. I'm just trying to clearly explain right. why I think this is mm. better than Crystal Skull, uh-huh. but not as good as the original trilogy. Right. But the character moments that I I really liked. Mm. I mean, I also liked how at the start when like he gets framed for a thing at the start and yes. some people come for him. Killing JFK. <laughs> yes. Which he did. Yeah, which he actually did. Yeah. And there's a clip of his- I did kill him, but it's not the point. <laughs> I got away scot-free, now you're blaming me. 
<laughs> I'm mad because you caught me. Yeah. The, where they corner him in like a like a little li- library kind of archive room, mm-hmm. and he's it's like when you like when an old man wakes up from a nap and he's confused. He's like, "Who are you? What's happening?" <laughs> and then some like shelves fall over. He pushes the shelves. He pushes up. the shelves. Yeah. And also, there's a terrible face replacement on the mm. body double. I don't know if you noticed that. You can see it online. The clips uh-huh. there where he like turns around and it just looks like it's horrible. <laughs> it just melts from one side to the <laughs> yeah, other. Yeah, pretty much. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I also think then you kind of see him regain his confidence. As it goes. The old murder reflexes kick in. The old murder in. reflexes kick in and it kind of, you know, and then he's on the street and then he's mm. like, okay, I'm going to do some of the stuff that I do and he gets on a horse and there's a chase or whatever. I also think the problem with the action sequences in this, that they're mostly chases. They are. It's mostly true, yeah. running about, mm. which is dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous. <laughs> so, Especially if you've got scissors or you're a Nazi. Yeah. So there's moments where like, you know, he's on the horse through the subway and whatever, but I guess my problem with the action sequences in this, I couldn't point to one and go, that's as good as... The tank chase. Yeah, there isn't any. I mean, maybe there will be in a rewatch, but there was no. There's no moment where you go, "Oh my god, remember the boulder?" Mm. Or you know, remember that the yeah, right? You know, where he shoots through four Nazis at yeah, once or whatever. Like the minecart, the bridge. Mm. There's not. There's not a, like the a, fact that you can just say the minecart or the bridge. Yeah, people what, immediately know what you're talking about. Yeah, or whatever. You exactly. Know? The well, the boat chase in Venice. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, the opening of. The Last Crusade, yeah, like all of that. Uh-huh. There's nothing like that. You're right. Yeah. And, and, and if I, if we can change topic slightly, of course, considering that he is an older man and he doesn't have, you know, the reflexes, he doesn't have the the leaping and the and the and the jumping about that he used to. Of course, James, he needs he needs his own offsider, doesn't he? He Boy, needs does a he. new character to jump in and be loved by all the people. And of course, we in, in we get Phoebe Waller Bridge. How That's do you right. feel about it? Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, I really like Phoebe Waller. I think also people are being like, <laughs> "Do you think she was on set ever on set with Harrison Ford?" She was like, "I'm your spaceship. <laughs> I'm your spaceship, Harrison Ford. I'm in your spaceship." I didn't be like, like. What are you talking about? I didn't about? like the robot from Solo that uh-huh. she played. Right, but I, I've seen the criticism of like, which is not very nice. Yeah, she fucking sucks. Like but a big so part does Indiana of the, Jones, yeah, exactly. Mostly. A big part of the character is that like, yeah, she's she's mean and also. Indiana Jones was supposed to look after her because something happened to her father mm. or whatever, and her father, like, went insane over this thing that happened uh-huh. or whatever. And, you know, she's, like, she's not completely like a young version of him, but mm. there is an obvious parallel between the things that he used to value, yeah. fortune and glory, et cetera. And she's learned that. Yeah. She's not learned any of the other lessons he's had because she hasn't been around. And, the, you know, in... And in, maybe she learns a lesson, maybe. Maybe she learns a lesson. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she learns a lesson. Mm. you got to kill JFK. You got but, it. But, you know, and, and the lesson that obviously that Indy learned at the end of Last Crusade, stop trying to impress your dad, yeah. let, let it go. He doesn't, let some stuff go. He doesn't they care. They both learned that. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, he'll never care. <laughs> he named you after a dog or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you slept with a hot Nazi lady? Well, he did as well. So <laughs> you can't you cannot impress him. There's no woman you, woman you can sleep with that he hasn't slept with already. So. Yeah. I just th- also think that this idea that, like, she is the main character of this, and I've seen that again and again, I just don't think it's true. No. I think she's as much as a main character as like Short Round or Marion or yeah. any of the like secondary characters. Or Henry Jones Senior. Henry Jones Senior. And I know there's moments people also complain where like, well, she solved a thing that he could have solved or whatever. It's like, who gives a shit? So like they're giving characters things to do in right. conversation. Like, yeah, yeah. Who cares? It's not like he's, I'm so old and so I don't understand it. She just got in first. He would have got there. Exactly, yeah. Because you know? like there's moments where – they, they try to figure out, like, what la- ancient language this thing is going to be that they decipher, and they have an argument about what it's going to be, and it ends up being the thing that she said. Yeah. But also, like, it's not a big deal because it was a flip of a coin, yeah. and he can read them both anyway. So it's not really, a, like, a victory. It's just like, oh, okay, it's this thing. Yeah. Let's just mm-hmm. let's kill the next person. That's it's time for killing. <laughs> yeah. No, I liked her. Yes. Yeah, and I think also what I didn't think was a great inclusion because he wasn't very – they didn't give him much to do with Sala Returns. Mm. And there's a moment at the – Jonathan uh, uh, Rhys-Davies. Yeah, yes. who I think is great. Mm. Um, or but. I sent a but coming. No, no, I just think for the character there's a moment where he's like Indiana Jones has to escape mm. and he's going to go on a plane. And people are also like how can he escape because he's framed for whatever – there's no nobody knows who anybody is. Right. He could just he could get on a pl- anybody yeah. could get on a plane. Did you know back in this era you could get on a plane and buy your ticket on the way? Did you mm-hmm. know that? I'd believe it. It's crazy. Who are you? I'm a murderer. Well, wow, you're already sitting down. <laughs> we can't go back, so <laughs> we're gonna have to trust you on this. Yeah, your ticket's five dollars. It's fine, but there's a five dollars <laughs> outrageous. I'll, I'll kill you all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you like I killed JFK, which I did just now before I got on the plane. 
Um, Sala drops him at the airport and he's like, I want to go on an adventure. I miss the sand and the sea. And Indiana Jones is like, listen, this is an adventure. Um, it is. <laughs> and Sala's like, oh, yeah, give him hell or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then, you know, and it's like, all right, settle down. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There, there's, and it's, I just think it's, it's, it's probably the most fan servicey thing that I felt here in terms of mm. like appearances or a, th- a thing that happens. Yeah, he doesn't contribute to the adventure really. He doesn't, no. he doesn't punch a guy through a newspaper or anything. No. And I like that also, the, like uh, the idea that he is now immigrated to America. Mm. And He's got a big family. I Indiana that was Jones nice. like made that happen or whatever. Yeah. That, I think that's all terrific. Mm. But I like, I liked because you know we we had in in Crystal Skull we had um, you know the agents the CIA whoever they are they're talking to India and they mentioned his you know his war record. Yeah, I liked we saw some stuff that took place during World War II. Totally, so that was super cool. And this also speaks to what I said uh, when we covered them in Caravan of Garbage. I really wish we got that Indiana Jones movie set in the nineties. Not set in the nineties. Well, they could do that if you live yeah. long enough. Yeah. Um, made in the nineties. You know mm. where you could have seen like right, yeah, something yeah. he did in World War Two, uh-huh. which I guess you know we ended mm. up getting here. Mm. But um, there's also a, a sidekick who's I don't mind, but it's just okay. like what if short round again? But it's not. It's not Indy's sidekick. It's, no. it's Phoebe Waller Bridge's sidekick. Nothing wrong with the kid himself, but I just think there wasn't that much to distinguish him from like a short round kind of character. Right, and I know right. they were looking for that. They're mm. they're looking for like. What if short round, but from somewhere else or whatever? Sure. <laughs> yeah. And I think similarly for like Antonio Banderas turns up in this mm. and again it's just kind of he's there and he's gone. Yeah. And it's I don't think it adds that much to it, to be honest. Okay. But would you rather have in Antonio Banderas or just a rando? Yeah, whatever. Okay, great. I think it's also, you know, it, it, when you see when you watch those original movies, when Sala shows up, you're not like that's a guy from Puss in Boots or whatever. Right. That's Zorro. <laughs> it's, it's just a uh, guy. Right. He's a, it's a guy he's meeting. That's true. And I love Antonio Banderas, and I didn't even mind that sequence, underwater sequence they had together. That felt a bit like Fate of Atlantis. Oh, yeah. And I guess just because of the water. But, <laughs> sure. Uh, I didn't it felt mind. a bit like taking a bath because of the water. <laughs> because of the water, yeah. It felt like a bit of, like drinking a glass of water and you look too close into the glass of water and you're like, this glass of water is my whole universe <laughs> and I'm on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, because of the water. Yeah, I. What do you think of the villain? Yeah, good. Mm. I mean, it's Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, I, th- I feel you can't go wrong with Mads Mikkelsen. No, whether he's a whether he's a villainous sorcerer or he's a villainous Nazi mm. or he's a teacher and he drinks too much and he's like goes to his friends. He's like, hey, we should drink a lot. Blood Eye, Blood Eye. Yeah, the from villain Casino Blood Royale. Eye. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done it all. Yeah. Uh, he was also in Star Wars. Oh yeah. Not technically a villain, but he did build the Death Star. But he put that <laughs> hole in it. That's true. He also put the so hole the, in it. So the universe's greatest hero. <laughs> yeah. And that's cool. In a way. Yeah, love Mads Mikkelsen. Great. I think also, like, it doesn't always need to be the Nazis. Hannibal, also a Hannibal, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Cannibal, yes. Like, it, it doesn't always need to be the Nazis in Indiana Jones. I think, you know, mm. the... The last crusade was very much like, oh, what was the vi- what was the villain that they we love people loved, you know, we'll bring back mm-hmm. bring out the Nazis again. Yeah. But I think also setting it in this era because there were a bunch of Nazis that went into the NASA program. Because he's based on when a um Von Brown? Von Brown, yeah, who was a, a known Nazi mm. who you know put had a massive hand in the space race and yes, getting right. and I actually the US thought on that would that would that uh, spoilers for what's not in this movie. I thought that it would it, that would have more Relevance to this movie, like something you wanted to do Indiana with... Jones on the moon. Maybe. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. Look how far I can whip! I can whip even further, <laughs> or not as far. Yeah, whoosh. I'm whipping the moon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Indy, you're whipping it too far. You're gonna whip it into the earth. <laughs> Shut up! The Nazis have built a giant whip on the moon to whip it into the earth. <laughs> They've used his own way. They've been, they were inspired by him. Yeah, their greatest weapon. No, I think also like the remnants of history, and mm. you even see that now. You yeah. know, you know these are these are men who very recently mm. were Nazis and still are. Correct, yes, and are just running around in the universe. And there's a conversation with, that he has with a waiter where he's like, "Are you enjoying your victory or whatever?" Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and he's just like, "You're a prick. Stop being a prick." You <laughs> sure. Know? But he yeah. can't stop being a prick, Mason, because he's a Nazi. That's right. Yeah. It's one of their defining characteristics. He also got hit in the face by a sign on a speeding train at the start oh, of yeah, the movie. Oh, yeah, that's true, yes. And then uh-huh. he was fine. But, you know, here's something I liked about this movie. Go on. I think all the talk of, like, history and events past and the talking and the problem solving. And there's also a sequence at the end when they go into a cave 
and that feels very classic Indiana Jones. And I think the mm. set is like beautifully constructed. Yep. It felt more like Raiders than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yes, when they uh-huh. go to the Aztec thing and it's just kind of like mm. uh, Yeah, it's a big pile of CGI nothing. Yes. Yeah, where this is mm. I I enjoyed that stuff quite mm. a bit. Like the actual physical device that they're after. Yes. Uh-huh. I really enjoyed like mm, which we'll get into in spoilers, I imagine. Spoilers, yeah. yeah. I liked all but of yeah, that. Plenty of plenty of uh I, I'm sure they were like, look, we've got to put some creepy crawlers in this. We've got to cover everybody in creepy crawlers at a certain point. Yeah, so. And sort of do snakes, but not really. Mm. Snakes, Mason. Yes. You know, why did it have to be snakes? It wasn't. Mm. But he, he didn't like it still. No That's spoilers, right. Mason. Um, also, I guess this is probably John Williams' final score. That's true. At 91 years old. Mm. Uh, apparently, like it was maybe he'll write a theme uh-huh. or maybe do some key moments in it, kind of mm-hmm. like he did with Solo. Like I think he wrote Han Solo's theme in that, but he didn't do right, the entire right. thing. But he just kept writing and he ended up doing the whole thing. I think the score in this is as good as any of the ones that he's done, which is to say bad. Oh, no. no he's obviously <laughs> wow. one of the best yeah, he's right. ever been. And he's, he, I mean, the fact that he can still do this is That's just right. mind-blowing to but me. But now he's retired, he's going to go back to his first love, which is writing jingles for Frozen Peas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. He's true calling. That's right. That's yeah. where the money is. So before we talk spoilers and why this bombed, mm-hmm. or maybe I'll save that to the very end, I <laughs> Why guess. it's currently bombing. Currently it might bombing, not should... bomb later. You're right. It might maybe not after bomb this later. review where we say it's pretty good and we enjoy it, yeah. maybe maybe it'll get a second wind. I think of all In the- In the two weeks before it goes to streaming. Yes. I think of all the underperforming blockbusters that we've experienced this year, mm. The Flash, Ant-Man 3, Transformers, The Little Mermaid- this one I liked the most. Nice. But I also think it's because I am also an old guy. That's probably it. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably old guy syndrome. Yeah. It's Finally you get to see someone like you on screen, <laughs> an old guy. <laughs> so, uh, this is, I'm an old guy too. <laughs> second to Transformers Rise of the Beast. No, it's Transformers Rise of the Beast behind it because, okay. you know, who doesn't like a robot gorilla punching a, That's true. a whatever? That's true. Who doesn't love that? Oh my god, that's me, mm. Ape Link. It's that's me right. on screen. Ape Link, that's right. <laughs> I'm just an Ape Link. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> some representation. I'm going to say best movie ever. I'm going to say best movie ever. Um, also, yeah. And I reckon I'm going to enjoy it more on a second viewing. Yeah. If I get, to I that. think it's too long. Also, I didn't haven't mentioned that, but it's uh-huh. too long. It's like twenty minutes too long. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I think you just cut out one of the chases. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, off. yeah. Look, if if uh, we, I think we mentioned this. When we came out of it originally, mm. uh, it's one of those movies, you know, I guess if you want to, you can boil any of these movies down to like a series of fetch quests. Yeah. And there's obviously more to it than that, but this is one of those movies where it's like, we've got to get the things. And then it's like, what if we add it in? But we've got to get, we've got to go to, to a thing, thing. We've got to go to a clue to get the thing. And that's yeah. it. If you cut one of those out, yep. you really streamline the, you know. The thing. You streamline that the thing. That they're doing. You streamline the thing they're doing. Spoilers? Yeah, it's time for spoilers. The thing they're doing is a big time travel. They're doing a big time travel. I never thought they'd do a big time travel in my life. I never thought they'd do it. I loved the way they did this, genuinely. Oh, yes? Yeah. Uh-huh. I think the fact that it's the device that they're looking for is not a time machine. Yes. It's basically a compass to a rift in time. That is that is pre-existing, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think maybe they could have announced earlier like what the plan of the Nazi was. Right. Because it's only like just before they do the time travel that he's like, I'm going to do a time travel right now. I See, I thought that was the perfect time to do it. Okay. Because the assumption obviously was that he was going to, the Nazi was going to go back. I mean, I guess also I suspected he was going to do a time travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go on. We think he's going to go back to the 1930s probably or sometime around then. Yeah. And And it's also like, does it make you young? Right, right. What is it? Yeah. yeah. I thought if if anything he was going to go back in time and warn Hitler or kill the Winston kill JFK. Churchill. Kill JFK again. Help Harrison Ford kill JFK. <laughs> right. Bang, bang. Oh, there was a second shooter. It was a Nazi. Um, or, you know, uh, you know, help Hitler or, or kill Winston Churchill or kill, you know, somebody and then help Hitler take over. But then the reveal, of course, is he's going to kill Hitler because yeah. he thought Hitler wasn't Hitlery enough. No. Not enough of a Nazi, this Hitler bloke. Let's he, get rid of him and then I'll do it. Yeah. Well, I think he, he liked the ideas of Hitler, but he, he thought his strategy was... Like Hitler defeated himself, right, in terms sure. of, but he, this guy had the strategy. Mm. Like, and I guess it's all well and good in hindsight to be like, "Well, I would have done World War Two like this." <laughs> That's right, wouldn't I? Yeah, but you know, nice try, Hitler. Yeah, but I, I, I like the idea. Keep also. your head in the game, Hitler. <laughs> like this guy is this like brilliant mathematician that has got people on the moon, mm. and he's got this plan where he's 
figured it out like to the second where I know mm. exactly how to get back in time and I'm going to s- stop and I'm going to, you know, reset history. Mm. But he do- he's not aware that the events which transpire, they're in a closed loop. Yes. It has always happened. Mm-hmm. And he, and, and he, and I know Indiana Jones says like you didn't take into account continental drift, mm-hmm. but I, I don't, I feel like that's not even a factor here. Doesn't seem that way, no. No. Because you're always going to go back 2,000 years? It's always going to happen this way. Like that device was specifically built to get them back to Archimedes yes. at a very specific See, time. See, I assumed that what, would the, what was going to happen, and I, I guess I didn't factor in that this movie is so long, that they were going to, they were going to, they, they were going to fly up. There was going to be a rift or a cloud with lightning in it, and they were yeah. going to go through the cloud. And then they were going to look around and be like, "What's happening around here?" And yeah. then the Nazis would have, you know, been chewed up by propeller blades because they have a fist fight on the top of the plane or whatever. Yeah, and then they would have flown back out of it. And, and they're like, "I think I saw a Roman ship." Or exactly, whatever. <laughs> and they would have been like, "No, nah, that's crazy, though." Kind yeah. of thing. I didn't think it would be like a full fifteen minute sequence in like the a Bill and Ted's esque. Like yeah. you meet an ancient character in a toga. That's or whatever. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. I also was really worried that we were going to go back and old Indiana Jones was going to run around with young Indiana Jones. Whoa, I, I really thought for a second me, that that, that was going to happen. And I was like, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I just thought, I know, I, I really like the way it unfolded. And I also think it's hilarious that there was that rumor that what was actually going to happen was Indiana Jones was going to die and then Phoebe Waller-Bridge was going to go through all his movies. Oh, like, wow. Do you remember that? And, and people are saying that this, what they've done here yes. is a reshoot. Oh, maybe. But let me tell you. Yeah. It's impossible. Because like, this was so expensive? Well, it's so expensive. And also there is on-set footage, like paparazzi footage of this ah. from like two years ago. Right, okay. And look, there was reshoots on this as there is literally every movie. Right. But this... This is the ending, like a variation on this. You know what I think? I wouldn't say I didn't like this sequence. I thought it was, you know, really interesting. And mm. and I guess if it's anything, it's the culmination of, you know, they practically say it in the movie, it's the culmination of like he spent his entire life tracking down this sort of stuff and wondering what the world was like back in the day and to finally see it yeah. even for a moment. Well, that is, you know, that's him finally achieving a goal that no one ever could, you yeah. know, kind of thing. But I think... So I, I, that's good in a way, but I, you know, what I think probably took something away from it is the when we see Archimedes and his apprentice, yeah. and they're in the they're in a building and they're having a conversation. I, I didn't want to see their side of it. Okay, yeah, I right. would have just preferred, like, if you kept everything else the same, mm. you have the they have the. The, the plane comes through the portal and it gets attacked by the, the Greek fire and the harpoons and what have you, and then it crashes and then Indy and, and Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, whose name I will never remember, yeah. are on the beach. Helena? And then, and then, yes. I think Helena? Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> and then maybe somebody who might be Archimedes shows up and you just see him go like, hmm, and you go, oh, it's Archimedes and yeah. what have you, and then they leave and then you go on a second plane. He's on the second plane, and then you, the, of, with that guy, <laughs> that guy who was there. He also went back in time. Yeah, I think that, that could have been. Had oh, a what if better. there's subsequent adventures of that guy who <laughs> fell asleep on his plane? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but yeah. then, but then you go away, and then be like, what a, what a, and that was Archimedes, I think, you know, kind yeah. of thing. But the fact that we saw there's him no have, ambiguity to this. Yeah, like the, 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 we saw his whole inner life, and yep, at the, I, I think, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, but what I did like about it was the idea of Indiana Jones is that he is observing history from the modern day mm. or the eras that it's set in. No, and the modern day. The modern day, you're They're right. They're all set in the 90s. <laughs> set in the 90s, which is, the, yes, the modern day, where, I mean, he's also, he's always been a guy that he he's he's been, like, he's a part of history and he's mm. been there for significant events, including the time that he saw God jump out of a box. That's right. And yeah. aliens. And, and he shot JFK He shot time. JFK and whatever. And there's a, a moment in the first one where Balok is talking to him about like like this moment that we're here, like this is fleeting. Mm. But, you know, being able to observe history and being a part of history itself when he's talking about the arc, like imagine that, like me and you, how significant is that? Mm. And this movie is like a culmination of that. There's yeah. even a conversation in that about if you put a watch in the desert and then it's worth something in a few thousand years and then the Nazis watch is left, yeah. you know, back in time. So I think there's some really interesting parallels to just the life of Indiana Jones, mm. like in this moment, like yeah, yeah. this is all of the things that he loves yeah. and he gets to meet a hero, you know, how did the time portal go back to Archimedes time though? I think it was just 
Just uh, sheer coincidence? Well, they said there were specific rifts in time that appear. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No. Let me just say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's uh, just that he was building a device yeah. that, that could locate these rifts and there was just one there? Yep. How convenient. I think so. Very convenient. I mean, it's also possible that he puzzled it out where it was probably going to be about yeah. then or whatever. Ah, right, 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 and, right. I mean, he wasn't complete, I assume. Yeah. But again, it's like there are other rifts, but this particular one mm. does this. That's right. So there was – I just thought it was hilarious that Mads Mikkelsen's character was never going anywhere else. Right. Uh-huh. He was always going to end up here yeah. and just end up, you know, dead on the yeah. ground, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, he didn't catch fire or anything, which would have been very fitting for you that's know, true. Villains when like was the, this. When did the Bermuda Triangle get? Like, when did that hit? I know, like the sixties. Yeah, maybe maybe that's the because mm. you know the last one was kind of aliens, and that was a big little green man, and that was a big fifties thing. Yeah. So maybe like the 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 popularity of the Bermuda Triangle sort of hit its peak in the sixties. It feels like it would, you know. Yeah. And I think also like people, uh, they maybe don't love the bit where Indiana Jones is like. I'm going to stay in the past. Yeah. Like there is nothing for me anywhere else. And the reason being that he's getting divorced and uh-huh. also that his son died in Vietnam, which mm. we will come back to. And the way that that is resolved is he's very intent on staying. And I genuinely thought for a moment that like, well, he might, he might yeah. stay. Yeah, yeah. And then I also thought Harrison Ford in a toga, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, I think he'd wear his existing trousers until they became very ratty and smelly. Yeah, when he died of that. <laughs> give me back my trousers. They try and fix them. Be like, give me back my trousers. <laughs> yeah, but and I. he invents trousers. Yeah. And then she ends up like knocking him out and taking him back. Uh-huh. And there's a few reasons why. Oh, how could, how could Phoebe Waller Bridge knock out a very old man? Well, how could that... she do it? How could she knock out a very old man who's been beaten up a lot? He was also like, hours? he was dying. Yeah. No, like, true. he was literally dying, and she knew that. And also, it's a closed loop. Yeah. Like, he can't live there. Like what has transpired, it has, all, happened, it has yeah. happened already. She was always going to punch him. And look, sure, I mean, it would have been also, I would have been fine if like she convinced him or he decided on his mm. own. But it doesn't matter to me the fact that he was, that's not so much important as what the realisation that he has afterwards. But I just, I loved that moment. There's a couple of moments that I thought he his performance was incredible. And this is the stuff I couldn't talk about in non-spoilers. One where he's talking about what happened to his son. Mm. Um, Mutt Williams Williams and how he enlisted in the Vietnam War, you know, despite his dad. And I think there is a lot of, even though I don't like that character that much Mm -hmm. and I don't like Shia LaBeouf, I'm glad they didn't put him in it. Uh I think that's the best use of this character for me personally. Uh But that there is a lot of Indiana Jones in him where he wants adventure and he's spiteful and Mm. he'll go and fight this war. And he's in, he's sort of in a world where there's not much else to discover. No, well, that's true. Mm. And it's also interesting because if you look at the, like Indiana Jones fought two wars Mm. I mean, in addition to all the killing he did in between yeah, and yeah, after, yeah, yeah. whereas the the war that Shia LaBeouf's character did, like the Vietnam War, that's a very like ide- ideologically different yeah. circumstance. Was Indian World War One and World yeah. War Two? Was he? Oh, yeah, yeah, in both. Yeah, nice. He didn't do the trilogy. Oh yeah, because he hasn't lived to World War Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. presumably, unless he finds the Grail again. But mm. I think so. There's a moment where he's reflecting on Mutt and his failings. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was like really tragic. I thought that was great as well. And yeah. he's just really excellent. And then at the moment, at the end, where he's at, he's you know he's back in time, and he's just like, "Fuck whatever, this will do." Like I'm just I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I've had enough. Mm-hmm. Like this was the last kind of thing in me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm lucky it was a time travel adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, what? I got to do the most amazing thing that anyone's <laughs> ever done. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. I I just I he, he really sold it. Yeah. Harrison Ford. Is really good in this movie. When he's motivated to be a good actor, he will absolutely be a good yeah. actor. And I've also seen that, like, well, how did he get cleared of the murder? Because they think he did a murder. Mm. And it's because also the CIA know that the Nazis were in the CIA. Yeah. And then also the Nazis killed a bunch of CIA people. Mm. So I think they would have just, it would have been known that he did yeah. not kill his colleagues. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I assume. Uh, what, who else? I mean, I, you know, I like seeing Boy, Boyd Holbrook and stuff. He didn't get a ton to mm. do in this, I didn't think. Um, I liked how uh, Phoebe Waller Bridge's uh, sidekick killed that big man. Yeah, I like that too. He just handcuffed him underwater and yep. left him to drown. That's a bit of fun. I thought he was going to return, but he didn't. He just drowned. No, he drowned. He drowned. I like that too because in an earlier movie, or I think even in a worse movie, Harrison Ford fist fights that guy for 10 minutes. That's right. And this Indiana Jones, he would he would die. He would die. <laughs> Straight true. away. You need it. It's a young man's game fighting a big man. That's right. Drown him underwater. That's right. But... I and then like the whole thing ends like just in a little apartment. Yeah. And I thought it was 
I mean, the best Indiana Jones ending. Is oh, but what Easter eggs are in that apartment? Well, I, so many. So many pictures right. of people we know. That's right. It's a picture of Balok, and he's like, I knew you'd time travel. That's right. written on the back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm proud of you, yeah, Indiana that's Jones. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the guy, what's the name of the guy that betrayed him in Last Crusade? Him and him and the and the late, the Nazi lady just be like you, you <laughs> Donovan. <laughs> yeah, Donovan. There we go. <laughs> good on you, Indiana Jones. That's good stuff, man. Good on you. <laughs> really good stuff. But um, the guy with the fez. Yeah, the guy with the. Remember fez. that time? Remember that time on the river? <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> Mac mm, yeah. from Crystal Skull. Oh yeah, that's right. Remember the time in the warehouse? <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> I knew you'd time travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah I knew. Yeah. It. Like the best ending ending of in, ending. End, ending is uh, the time he fought Dracula in Young Indiana Jones. But if I had to pick the second best ending, <laughs> it's obviously the end of The Last Crusade. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that movie is like, I feel like the end of adventuring. And this mm. movie is felt like, that's the best ending. Let me just clarify that. Yeah. But this movie is like the end of like a life like well lived mm. and a deserved kind of peace. Yeah, except for those last few years when he was just sad. Yeah, that was sad, obviously. <laughs> and I thought it was I thought it was really interesting because also Marion was spoiled for us. Cause... Yeah, when we when we went to see look, again, the 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 um the endless treasures and bribery we get when we go to these premieres because the head of Disney Australia or whoever it was, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was head of Disney or something. Somewhere she out. showed up, she did a little speech and she went and then and it was a little on the screen there was like a static poster like the classic one and it's got you know, uh, Harrison Ford and all the stars, and she's like, oh, you know, welcome to this screening and we're, we're gonna, you're going to see all the adventures of Harrison Ford and Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Antonia Banderas and Karen Allen. And we're yeah. like, sorry, what? She's not on the poster. <laughs> what do you mean? She's then, not been in any of the trailers. And then when she's not in the movie at the start, you're like, well, I wonder who's going to show up right. at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah so yeah. thanks for that, Disney. Anyway, she was great for what she was, not the lady. I mm. mean, the lady from Disney was great. She, she was great, that's true. <laughs> but Karen Allen was great. And what I what I thought was interesting about that, where he talks about earlier how he's like, Karen Allen was so like grief stricken that it, it, it couldn't be resolved and he had to leave or whatever. Yeah. But the way that she speaks to him is like, like, are you back? And I think what it was that, like, he he was was like, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) Where the person who was, like, lost was, he was. Yeah. It was him. And I think him going on this adventure and him, you know, and all of these things and, you know, doing good and all the things, murdering and the things that Mm. he's good at, Mm. like, that's what kind of brought her back because she's seen that he kind of healed through this in a way, yeah, yeah, to an extent. If only all wayward husbands could go on a time travel adventure <laughs> and meet Archimedes, and then learn that yeah. actually the more valuable things might have actually been in the past. And then Phoebe Waller Bridge punches you in the head, and then you get on a plane with the other the other guy's plane, yeah, who fell asleep on the plane, and he went back in time as well. And they get back on his plane, and they go back through the time rift, yep, yep. and then you go back to your apartment in New York, and then your wife's there, and you're like, oh, I get it now. And I'm gonna, if put, only that could happen to every. I'm husband. gonna put the hat on again. Yeah, I'll put the hat back on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but. Because, you know, you see earlier on, like, he is drinking and he's just living history. And that's all he's doing. Like, he's retiring and he's like, I hate this because all I'm escaping through teaching and history yeah, yeah. and all of that. But the kids don't, the kids don't, the kids don't want to hear about they history just, anymore. They want to hear about Archimedes. They want to hear about mm. um, the, the Beatles. They want to hear, hear about, about the Beatles, Beatles and yes. how the Beatles are going to the moon or whatever. That's right. Yeah. I just thought it was, it was. They a, want to hear about Mott the Hoople. <laughs> what? It was a band that David Bowie was in. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. That's all you got? Okay, yeah. But I think it was a... That's the dumbest band I could think of. <laughs> it, was a, it was a nice, quiet, reflective, mm. like I feel dignified kind of ending to the I want to hear about Dozy, Dicky, <laughs> Mick and Titch. <laughs> Maybe they would have. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not bombastic. It's, yeah. just a, it's just a guy. That's true. And that's what he is. Anyway, I've got some reviews here, Mason. Mm -hmm. It's from Jim who says, Indy 5, yeah, the de-aging is still a little Mando season 2 finale-esque. And yeah, it's still Nazis, but it's a damn good history adventure Rob, aimed at kids. And I wasn't vomiting member berries by the end. Lucasfilm on form. Best movie ever. I just want to be clear. I've just looked it up. Uh, David Bowie wasn't in Mott the Hoople, but he produced one of their albums and he wrote the song All the Young Dudes. So, What about him? They're pretty cool. Oh, well, yeah, yeah great. Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah, a yeah. lyric? Yeah, they're pretty long. All the young, the young dudes, dudes they're, they're pretty, pretty cool. cool. <laughs> I guess. 
Tony says, saw Indy 5 last night and it was fine. Pretty generic plot carried by the charm of Ford and Phoebe and their great chemistry together. Best movie ever. Thanks. Uh, even ever thanks to getting the vibe generally right. Xavier says, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was great. It could have been a nost- nostalgia or because I went in with low expectations, but I really enjoyed it. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, 7 out of 10. Dial of Destiny, 8 out of 10. Temple of Doom, 9 out of 10. Raiders and Last Crusade, 10 out of 10. Whoa. Mafdenek says, just came out of Indiana Jones. Absolutely loved it. Harrison Ford and the entire cast crushed some wonky and sappy parts, but that all made it feel authentic. It also made me cry. And more than once, I got uh, nervous going in, but best movie ever. And the Home Video Update podcast said, that was an Indiana Jones-ass Indiana Jones movie. Waste <laughs> of Zorro and the magical drying clothes were odd, but best movie ever. There you go. This is... Uh, this is. I think this is being better received than I thought it would be. Like, yeah. I think there is a consensus yeah. that people seem to sort of like this. I, th- I think so, yeah. Which surprises me, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think I I feel like despite some thumbnails you might see. Yeah, I think the review consensus to me seems to be I yeah like like it's better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think that's probably not like this is incredible. This has blown our minds. I think that maybe if they had come out of cans and been like this is the best thing that's ever happened, Mm. then we probably would have a different conversation. I also think there's probably a backlash that seems to be like, well, if you how good can a movie be if you're only saying it's pretty good? Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Some movies are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, some movies are pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the future before we talk about what happened here? Yes. So, on... Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about the bad box office. I yeah. yeah. On uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge replacing Indiana Jones, this is why Variety, she said, I will replace him. There's a scene where I replaced him through time. Whoa. And I killed him in every movie. Whoa. <laughs> and I whipped him on the dick and his dick came off. <laughs> That's right. Then I took his dick. <laughs> I threw it in a river. <laughs> she said and it sailed down the river and everybody's like see you later Indiana Jones's dick <laughs> and they were laughing yeah it's a metaphor but it's also literal they said <laughs> I'm Phoebe Waller-Bridge <laughs> feminism that's what she said and everybody got furious and they should have <laughs> this is what these people sound like to us by the way yeah. just nonsense <laughs> Oh, uh, shit, there's no replacing. Settle down, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no replacing Indiana Jones in any way, but I feel like the character herself, she did feel fresh on the page and there is a sense of, is there room in the world for something like this? So I, I do think there's room for a slightly clumsier, bruised, limping female action star, maybe in the future. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't, maybe off the performance of this, maybe not. There was mm. also a Ravenwood series that was in development. That's right. Marion's father was going to be a prequel. James Mangold also said he had nothing to do with that when they were kind of making it happen, yep. which it isn't happening at the moment. And I'm also glad, um, and I know people have said, like, we want a short round, whatever. Uh-huh. I'm glad he wasn't in this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, apparently also this was filming at the same time as Everything Everywhere All at Once. So right, okay, even if yeah. he did, it would have he would have turned up at the end of the apartment. Yeah, which would, too many people in too, that apartment. Too many people. It's yeah, yeah, New yeah. York apartment. I'm here too, he would have said. Yeah. Remember me? Yeah. You haven't seen you in 30 years. We do. Yeah. Remember me? I'm famous again. I won an Oscar. <laughs> That's so right. I'm here. Yeah, here's my Oscar, by the way. Here <laughs> it is. How many have you won? I'll just nominate it for Witness and nothing else. Interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm. When was that? The 80s. Long, yeah, long time ago. <laughs> long time ago, man. The 80s, the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, I also think, like, they could just do nothing. Yeah. This could, sure. this could be it. It's okay to have a story that ends sometimes, mm. you know? Imagine a world, Mason. Yeah. All right. And then, anyway, it might be nothing, and I'll talk about why. But <sighs> it right. won't be. There will be something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, I know we've talked about it, but there is that thing of, like, the narrative, it's it's woke, Kathleen Kennedy, et cetera, and whatever. Mm, sure, sure. I'm sure there is a contingent of fans who don't see this for that reason. Mm-hmm. But the the sheer numbers... That's not enough people exactly. who, we, we, who know who Kathleen Kennedy yeah. is. We talk about this all the time, but I think, you know, when people say, oh, my God, this, this movie isn't going to do well without the true DC fans to save it or whatever, it's like that represents the tiniest sliver. If you want to make a billion dollars, if you yep. want to make $2 billion, it can't be just a hardcore fan base who love this character and, and nothing else. You need the general audience, and that's got very yep. little to do with – insider politics or, or any of these things. It's just, does this appeal to the, the general audience? And it's funny that you say that because this is an old person's property, mm. as in our age and right, above, yes. right? And I know uh. there are people younger than us who have enjoyed these movies. Mm. But on the whole, there was 
newer people to this franchise yes. or even people who used to like it who aren't really on board anymore, then they're not interested. So this is via THR. 42% of tickets were bought by those aged 45 and up, which included 23% bought by those aged 55 or older. Oh, man. The, the demographic also skews male. And as you said... You need everybody. Mm. If you want to make a billion dollars, yeah. you need everybody or everybody needs to bring their kids like Mario. Yeah, right. It uh-huh. needs to be something like that. Mm. And, and, they, other- and they need to they need to not have any other options. Mm. Like they need to not be like, well, in a couple of weeks we'll just see this on streaming. Exactly. Uh, and, and these days we don't, we don't know, you know. And we've talked about this before, specifically also on, on Big Sandwich where we talked about some Indiana Jones comics this week. Oh, yes. But the thing about the property of Indiana Jones is – They've sat on this since 2008. Mm, that's true. The movie happened. There's yeah. been a couple of video games like a long time ago around there. Uh-huh, yeah. And also it's like some Lego video game stuff. Yeah, yeah. But this isn't something that Disney have maintained since they've had it. Yes. There was always the the word that like this was going to happen. It was yeah, one of yeah. the early things that they announced. But you can't maintain a fan base on this is going to happen no. eventually. Yeah, over 15 years. And what happened with Star Wars is they slowly built it back up by they did animated series. Mm-hmm. They did games. Well, they sort of. Like yeah, they're yeah. doing more now, obviously. They had comics. You know, there was TV series. Like even in the 90s with Indiana yeah. Jones, there was young Indiana Jones the movies were always on all the time forever. Mm-hmm. There was video games for like 10 years straight. And different genres. Different if you like genres, an action game or yeah. a click it, point and click adventure game. I knew Indiana Jones. Like, I didn't grow up with Indiana Jones. Like I grew mm. up in the 90s really. Mm. And I saw all of this content. Like it was done by the time that we got to yeah, it. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But it was kept alive. Yeah, and yeah. this is something that has not been Kept yeah. alive. Imagine an animated series in the style of like Clone Wars. Exactly. He's whipping about and he's, he's jumping about. about yeah. You, know? you need to kind of get people, like, not saturate necessarily, but uh-huh. you need to, you know, drip feed to like young people and audiences. What and- about in the, the something that kept Doctor Who going for years was uh, audio dramas? What about an uh, Indiana Jones audio yep. dramas? That would be perfect because that, you know. And in uh, an adventure, a bold adventurer finding treasure in the in the in the jungles of Peru or whatever. That's what those audio dramas were yep. were back in the day. Before, exactly before TV, it was that kind of stuff. Like, give us give us one of those. Give us a if you can't get Harrison Ford, which you can't, yeah. you get a Harrison Ford sound alike. I completely agree because there is nothing. Even the Indiana Jones comics, which mm. there there's not a, as many as Star Wars. Uh-huh. Because also with the universe of Indiana Jones, you're limited because. Star Wars, you can go anywhere technically. Yes. Indiana Jones is a guy. It is the one guy, yeah. And so there aren't as many comics, but they didn't even re-release the comics. That's true. They haven't been available unless you want to buy, like, hard copies mm. for, I, I don't know. Have they ever been on Comixology? I don't know. I don't know. They're not now. Yeah. Like, they're certainly pro- they're, they're not on the front page of Comixology yeah. probably. Even if they put these on Disney Plus four years ago, uh-huh. I think that would have helped. Mm. People don't. Fucking know this, mm. or they know and they don't care. Yeah. Oh, when I said in the style of the Clone Wars, I meant the original, like the Tartakovsky, like the sound yeah. animated one. Or in, either. It, it doesn't either of matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. Yeah. yeah. So I think also there's a possibility that word of mouth could carry this further than it's going to, than, That's true. than it's looking to at the moment. Mm. But I just think they dropped the ball on this. Yeah. I think they yeah. were hoping for a, I think they were hoping for a kind of Top Gun Maverick, Maverick yep. style resurgence of like, Oh my god, this is selling by the billions. How does that happen? Well, because yeah. this Tom, isn't Star Wars. No. And because Tom Cruise is, you know, he's kept his profile high and mm-hmm. and uh he's a lunatic. He's a lunatic. But also you know going into like a Tom Cruise movie that he's going to do a thing, right? It's true, yeah. Whereas going into this, he's not going to do a thing. Harrison's not going to do, do a thing. He might do a thing. He might do a thing. But you don't have that kind of mm. It's it's just different. It is different. It's different, and you need to treat it differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyways, so that's some advice for Hollywood out there. It's yeah. different. You got to treat it different. Treat it different. Mm-hmm. Treat it mean. Keep them keen. Also, that's right. That's a good one. That's right. And yeah. go work, go broke. Yeah, obviously. that's obviously that's the obviously yeah yeah. If you could, if you take anything away from this, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're saying. Yeah, notoriously woke franchise, <laughs> the Indiana Jones Adventures. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'd love to know what people think if they are interested. Yeah, uh, in, in ta- or don't. Oh, well don't sure. Yeah. I mean, you might you might be busy. Yeah. <laughs> Should we move on to the next segment Let's of the show? Let's move on. What is it called? It's called what we read in. Yeah. What we gonna read? Oh my god. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? 
Mason, what are you reading? I I'll start. So basically, oh, come on, mate. Claire's currently touring the UK. Oh, here we go. She'll be there for the next. Should we few call weeks. what you're plugging? Yeah. What you're plugging for? Well, I'm just saying uh, this, nepotism. This, 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 is it nepotism if it's your wife? Yep. Okay, great. These are the, uh, so she already did her show in London Ooh, on the second. But the big Apple. She's also got one in Exeter on the fourth. She's got Ooh. one in Dublin at Ooh. the Bellow Bar on the sixth. There's one oh, in goodness. Glasgow at Kingsborough Gardens she's on the eighth. She's gone all over this wide brown land. She's got one of the caves in Edinburgh on July 9th. She's in got, a cave, James. In a cave. She's got one at the Eagle Inn in Manchester on the eleventh of July. She's Manchester. Got one in, in Petersfield in Hampshire on the thirteenth. Yep. She's got one on July sixteenth uh, with matrescent author Lucy Jones. Now, basically, it's uh, it's, it's an inc- I think it's an incredible album. It's about like. I don't know what is what it's what's it about, Mason? You've listened to it a hundred times. Motherhood. It's not just motherhood, Mason. It's mostly about motherhood. No, it's not actually. It's <laughs> about love. It is about uh, it's like it's it's folk music, Mason. That's it's kind true. of a folk indie folk pop kind of thing situation. Yeah, no, it is. You're right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Uh, it's also about like love and life, and if mm. you've like, maybe got a partner you want to bring, you don't have to bring a partner. You come by yourself, like you know what I mean. Any of these, you, you, mm. you could come along. It's if mostly you about to. Avatar too, isn't it's, it? There's a lot of a lot Avatar, of songs about Avatar too. Yeah, she's not a fan, and she'll tell you all about it. That's right. It also doesn't go forever. Like you mm. could turn up this event, and there's not going to be like an hour of preamble or whatever. It's uh, you know, <laughs> that's a guarantee. That's, that's the a guarantee. Totality guarantee. The, well, there will be like you know, so, uh, some of these do have people that um who are performing support acts, hand, support acts, or like. Poets and various other people and, and yeah. guest speakers, but it's it's you know it's you're pretty much straight into it is what I'm That's saying, right. which is what I love about a concert. Yeah. But if you want to check it out, uh, the dates it's Claire dot com slash events. Mm, yeah, which I, nice. no, I can't attend any of these because I'm here. That's true. Being a good dad. That's true. And people are like, how are you doing it all, James? How are you surviving? How are you looking after your kids and still working? I'll Bath tell you how. Crystal I'm, meth. No, I'm fucking incredible, Mason, and I'm <laughs> invincible, and I'm gonna fucking live forever. You are on bathtub <laughs> crystal meth. <laughs> no, Mason, not the things that I said. Okay. I'm incredible. That's okay. how I do it. I'm mm. fucking unstoppable. Yeah. Anyway, we got some bathtub crystal meth vibes going on there, and my kids are watching Detective Pikachu. They are watching that right now. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what are you reading? I am all caught up. On... I'll cut you off there. Oh mate. come on, mate! <laughs> no, go on. Sorry. I'm all caught up on Star Trek: Strange New Worlds because the new season's ah. out. Three episodes are out so far. Uh, absolutely delightful. Isn't the previous season on YouTube or something now? Didn't they? Oh, it might be. Didn't they do that? Oh, check it out if it is. It's yeah. a good. Uh, and tell you what, it's it, we've had uh, three episodes. We've had a courtroom drama. Yeah. Which is a I, I would say a classic mainstay of, of of your Star Trek, especially your old school Star Trek. Sure. Because if you recall, in the end of the last season. No, I haven't okay, seen. Okay. Well, it. number one, uh, Rebecca Romaine's character. She was she was going to be on trial for being genetically engineered. Good. Which is illegal. Yeah, good. Uh, and so we had a big courtroom drama. There was a uh, We Have to Go Back in Time to the 21st Century Ooh. episode where um, – Did they meet um, Kesha? No, they actually don't meet Kesha, no. <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 that's right. Which is – it's Which weird. episode is Kesha in? Every other episode. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. They, go, they go back in time like, God, finally we're away from Kesha. <laughs> um but you know how – what I thought was interesting is that normally a go back in time to the present day episode is like we've blown the budget. Yeah, sure. You know? So we have to go back – because I actually go back in time to Canada, which is where I assume they filmed <laughs> They probably filmed it, yeah. Uh, so it's um, uh, Noonie and Singh and she goes back in time with a parallel universe version of uh, James Kirk. Okay. They, they go back in time and have an adventure because they've got to save the world. And there's also an episode – my favourite bit in it, there's an episode where uh, it's, it's Klingon focused – the team has to go and uh, rescue one of the characters from a, like an outpost full of Klingons. Yeah. And there's a scene where the medical team, Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel, they're like surrounded by Klingons and they're like, well, better do some drugs. <laughs> and they just like shoot a green, th- like a like a green chemical in their necks and they just, then it just like ruin everyone. They just, <laughs> okay. Like, they just like clear a room of Klingons because they're like, well, Drugs. We're on venom now, so let's just <laughs> let's just annihilate everyone. It's so, super fun. I know, like there has been talk of like new Star Trek is not good or whatever, right? But this is like really found its I feet. I like right? all new Star Trek. Yeah, I okay. even like. I know a lot of people don't like Discovery, but I think I it's watched, good. I also. liked the first season. There you go, and that's all I saw. I look. I appreciate that there's. Two arms of Star Trek, one of which is like I mean, well, Lower Decks is great. Yeah, as well, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. But like the one that where it's like you, the, everything's utopian society and everything's great. But then I like Discovery, where it's like, well, even if there was a utopian society, people wouldn't. You know, we're, we're, there, there's bumps along the road, and yeah. a lot of people wouldn't be happy with it anyway. So it'd still be something from the outer regions, which is coming to shoot you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. The Gorn. The Gorn. What coming. if the Gorn are there? What if a lizard had to fist yeah. fight you? That's right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I mentioned this in our review, but we our latest episode of a, the Big Sandwich Comic Book Classic Club or whatever, mm-hmm. we talk about uh, an Indiana Jones comic from the past, and we also talk about the state of Indiana Jones in general. Oh, the absolute which a, a little a little bit of what we got into. Mm. Uh, if you are interested, it's it's like our Patreon. There's also like an from the previous week, which is still up. As is all the stuff we put up. There's a huge back catalog. That's right. We played a couple of Indiana Jones games, and it's an hour long. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Which is time enough to finish one of those games, I reckon. At least one. Mm. Oh, I also, uh, and you watched as well, the second episode of Secret Invasion. I did. What did you think? It's all right. Okay. I thought it was an improvement on the first episode. Sure. I thought there, there's a scene between Rhodey and Nick Fury, which I thought was especially that was good. good. Yeah. This just, it's not its not action-packed, but it's, it's just. It's a scroll. Exactly. And a lot of people I, I, I saw uh, on Twitter were like, oh, all the stuff Rhodey's saying, he must be a scroll. Mm. And I'm like. Just sounded like Rhodey. Yeah. That's exactly what he's like. He's kind of mean he's and kind of, right. He's kind of mean and right. But he's also the first guy to be like, well, I think everybody should be in jail. You know? And that's exactly what it's like. Remember? Yeah. Remember, he, remember in Civil War where he shows up and he's like, you're under arrest, Captain America. Yeah. You're probably a bad guy now. Yeah. You're going to jail. Well, I agree with Captain America, actually. Wow. Yeah, that's just my point that wow. I was making. Wow. Because, you know, in the Marvel Universe, mm-hmm. You know, you, 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 you're allowed to go just, just fly off and do whatever. That's true, yeah. Because there's always a secret something. Yes. And you can't be waiting for a document to come through. That's exactly right. Yeah, you when know? you've got lasers and so forth. You've got lasers and such. Mm. Anything else? Or should we do letters? I think we should do letters. Is there something else I've watched this week? I Probably know, not. Mason. There's no way of knowing, is there? Yeah. Okay, let's just do letters. I finished Silo. It's a good show. All right. That's yeah. also good. I was going to say that's also got Rebecca Ferguson, but we haven't. Well, we it haven't does. Been, we haven't been talking about Rebecca Ferguson. But there is a new uh, there is a new Mission Impossible movie coming. She's out. probably in that. She's definitely in that. She's probably. Got an She's definitely in it. She's got She's an probably in it. Yeah. Anyway, his letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters. They're only a day. Ah, wow. I know they're here right now. We're gonna ah. do letters. The letter segment is that right? Absolutely. That Am I reading that correctly? That is the letter segment. That's correct. Am I reading that sign that you've put up on the wall, Mason? That's exactly it says right. Letter segment. That's right. Great. You're absolutely right. Tell me the truth, Mason. Okay. Can you send an email to weeklyplanetpod at gmail dot com? Yeah, and not only I can do it, other people can do it too. Tell me a second piece of truth. Well, here's can you, a second. Can you also hashtag Weekly Planet Pod if you haven't exceeded your Twitter limit? I cannot tell a lie. Yes, you can. Great. For now. For now. For now. Hey, speaking of Mission Impossibles. Yeah. Uh, here's an email from uh, Teo Salonen. Okay. Sometimes I read out a full name and I'm like, am I doxing someone? And then I'm like, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> just move. And they say, yeah, just move. They say, did you know there is a Finnish singer in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? Hi, I'm Teo, long-time listener from Finland. I didn't know this. No, neither did I. Anyway, I watched your most recent Caravan of Garbage about Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. We're doing it. Bit- and big stunts are back. That's right. Uh, banger of a video, but did you know that main villain's henchman is a Finnish singer-actor, Samuli Edelman? No. He had a notable career in Finnish music and film scene, and this is without question his biggest role, although he does not have any lines. Uh, but in Finland, he's not remembered for being the only guy from his country to be in a Mission Impossible movie, but everybody remembers that he jumped from Finland to Sweden, a cruise ship, during the 90s just for laughs and waited in the ocean to be rescued. The ship's <laughs> captain gave him a lifelong ban to set foot on that ship. Hence, there is a term in Finnish language to do the Edelmans, which means jumping off a boat. Is this all a lie? It could all be a lie, <laughs> but it sounds very Finnish, doesn't it? Sounds very Finnish. It seems very Nokia, doesn't it? Let's see if this has a strong Finnish gone. Um... It doesn't, but I, my question to you, James, is <laughs> the question I posit. A question I posit to you. Thank you for your email, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, who's your favourite singer who appear or like musician who's in like a movie or a TV series? Who's your oh, Who's your favourite? God. Well, The Mask. Two. <laughs> where Jamie Kennedy does that really sad oh, musical number. <laughs> okay, so you're saying your favourite musician in a movie is <laughs> Jamie Kennedy in the, the movie The Mask, Son of the uh, Mask. Maybe. Bowie in The Prestige. Yep, that's great. Yeah, tremendous. Well, an, I know people might say Labyrinth. But yeah, yeah. yeah no, but right. that's great. I mean, and also that's like that's pitched exactly. Yeah. Like he's, that's such a Bowie role. What about Tom Waits in Dracula? That's I was going to say Tom Waits is, would be my pick, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is Just love, love a bit of Tom Waits. The other ones? Sure. What about Eminem in 8 Mile? What about Chris? Who goes, I've eaten all this spaghetti. Who wants <laughs> to rap out on me right now? Bearing in mind, I'm going to vomit spaghetti <laughs> on you. <laughs> They're like, he'll do it too. <laughs> That was the secret. His winning. arms are weak yeah. from all the spaghetti he's been shoveling into his mouth. That's right. He can't cover his mouth when he vomits the spaghetti. <laughs> what about Creed Bratton in uh, in The Office? Oh, yeah. Who's just Creed. Like, it's that's just him. The, It's just, yeah. He was in town recently just to do music. I'm, I missed out on tickets. I like, yeah, that's mm. cool. I, mm. I like that character and that guy, though I don't know anything about him. Mm, same. 
Uh, what about Madonna in Bond? What about Madonna in Dick Tracy? Mm, sure, good mm. movie. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'm just quickly Googling best musicians in film. Well, mine is never going to change. It's going to be Tom Waits. Uh, Lady Gaga is good in um, Star is Born. Oh, yeah, that's and true. And probably other things that she's in. Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Well, well you don't be, have to know, James. I don't have to know and I won't know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Jennifer Hudson's good in things. Mm. 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 Well, mm. well that's, and that's all she wrote. That's right. Uh, Mason, I've got a tweet here. Go on. From Jamie, who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I'm re-watching Temple of Doom and it's just occurred to me for the first time in 30 years that for the that for the number of villages in the village, the child ratio in the mines are fucking mental. Was it 10 <laughs> kids per family? Potentially, yes. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. <laughs> because that that's the whole vibe of that village, right? Absolutely. That era, what else could you do? Like, I mean, that era. Yeah. But like in that, in that, in that time period that they were supposedly living in. Yeah. What else could you do? Exactly. You know? Do you think um the village you couldn't watch Red Notice, could you? No. Well, probably. You could, reen- been, you could, been away. You could reenact Red Notice. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Do you think, though, in that movie, as soon as Indiana Jones left, but, yes. did the village come back to life then? Because he was gone for a few weeks and it would have been a while for the greenery and the fruit to kick in, right? Okay. So it would have been like at least a month, I feel like, before between he came back. So like they knew because they're like, we knew you were coming back because all the fucking tr- fruit came back or whatever. Oh. Remember? I yeah, but I don't know. Mm. There's no way of knowing. Yeah. Mm. Good movie. Mm. And forsooth, you were husband and wife the whole time. Verily, they're recreating Red Notice. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, they got the biggest guy in the village to be the rock. <laughs> we were. Mm. Uh, great stuff. Thank you, yeah. JB. What do you got? Uh, this is from Zachary. Yeah. What happened to Austin Powers? Oh, he's fucking dead. <laughs> I want a sad Austin Powers yeah, five right? in the style yeah, of Indiana yeah. Jones. Just skip to five. Skip to five. In the style of Indiana yeah. Jones. Skip to five in the style of Leonard Part Six, there starring Bill Cosby. <laughs> uh, hi, James and Meso. Uh, been a fan of the pod for many years. Whoa. Uh, growing up, I always got a good kick out of watching the Austin Powers movies. It's interesting, for every present day movie, there seems to be about, about 100 YouTube video essays. But it seems the Austin Powers movies have been forgotten. Uh, curious to hear your thoughts about and why perhaps the Austin Powers movies haven't resonated with today's audiences or perhaps stood the test of time. Because uh, they're just old comedies now at this point, I yeah, think. Yeah, comedy doesn't age particularly well, yeah. does it? You know, I mean, if you look at, like, comedies from any era, like yeah. not a lot of them really stick around. Uh-huh. And they were, you know, there was a very specific British kind of also pop culture phenomenon. Right. Because uh-huh. there was, you know, there was, I, there was Spice Oasis. Girls and Oasis and... <laughs> Cold play. Cool Britannia. Cool Britannia, they call it, exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it it is probably, even though it is like a genre comedy, it's a spy comedy, Mm. uh, but comedy doesn't age. good jokes in Yeah, I mean, no, but comedy doesn't age particularly well, oftentimes because. Too horny. Too horny and like a lot of stuff, a lot of jokes don't age well. Like a lot of stuff where it's like, well, it wasn't appropriate then, but everybody, we all thought it was appropriate. Mm. So we're going to say these jokes that aren't cool anymore. Or so the they references kind of have... like, and also it's been done a hundred times mm. since or yeah, a variation yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. Also it gets memed and impersonated to death. Oh, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think there is de- there would be room for something for him to come back. I, I also think people wonder would be somewhat yeah, open to because it maybe. These, like sometimes you'll see on Twitter somebody throwing an Austin Powers party or something like that yeah. where it's because it's ironic mm. because it's so. It was, and it was always ironic. Was it? Yeah, but now it's like so uncool that it's cool again. Yeah. But it's not cool, but it's like it's fun to do it ironically. So maybe we have to just reach a certain time yeah. where it would be like, okay, we've got to, we're doing this again, are we? But also mm. um, Mike Myers doesn't want to do Austin Powers again, I don't I think. think he'd, I think he's been, he has been talk. he has talked about it over the years, but also he's had a few things that like the Love Guru didn't do well. That's he's another. He's been in some yeah. stuff. That's another thing I think he as well. He did the Pentaverinth. He did the Pentaverinth. Whatever it was on Netflix. Yeah, yeah you know, you're right. Didn't love. Um. I think you're probably right. If he'd had a string of hits, yeah. I think people would be like, oh, my God, Austin, uh, you know, they go, oh, my, the new Mike Myers thing is incredible. And mm. remember uh, Austin Powers? Yeah. And we go, oh, yeah, of course. But the fact that it's sort of we, we look we look back on them less fondly because we go, well, oh, that wasn't great and that wasn't great. So maybe those ones were Made me great. too horny, actually. Maybe too horny, baby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It also felt like by the end it had, had run its course. That's true. Like you're watching that third one, you're like, oh, yeah, all these jokes, they've, they're doing them again. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, but make another one. It's not my money. This is from <laughs> Danny Boy Repipes who says, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Hey, Wikipedia Brown and at Mr. Sunday Movies. Do you ever eat so much peanut butter that it closes your airway and you're seconds away from death as you scramble for something to drink? I certainly don't. I certainly didn't do it again just now. 
Oh, uh, no, I don't do that. I'm, no, just, built, that. I'm just built different, actually. Yeah. So I'll I can... say, you, if, if you have done this, your peanut butter is too dry. Mm. You want to get like a, a wet peanut butter. A wet, no, an oilier peanut butter, I would say. I reckon you should probably like just spoon out half the peanut butter and then put in half water. Yep. And then just sort of shake it around a bit. Okay. And, and then drink you, it. Yeah, then drink it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I can tell you the best brand of peanut butter. Let me just find it. Oh, yeah. It's one of your fancy artisanal ones, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. Here we go. It's uh, called Ridiculously Delicious, the 100% Australian old fashioned peanut butter. It comes in chunky, smooth, and extra chunky. Um, it, it is about $8 to $9 a jar. Use it sparingly. <laughs> That's right. Um, yep, yep. It's very good. Okay. And it tastes, and it's all like, again, it's just pure peanut butter. There's mm. not a bunch of weird shit in it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here's an email from Goha. One Piece. One Piece? Hi, James and Meso. I a, saw the trailer. About a year ago, One Piece beat Batman for total number of copies sold and is now only behind Superman for the best-selling comic book of all time. Considering Superman has quite a bit of a head start of Luffy, whom I'm assuming is the main character from One assuming? Piece. Assuming? You don't need to tell me that. <laughs> it seems inevitable that before the series ends, it will dethrone Superman. That being said, there's a new One Piece live-action Netflix series starting in August. Yeah. Uh, this one looks promising. Would you guys ever consider reviewing the show? Yeah. I mean, yeah, we don't know. We'd, we'd have to do it from the perspective of there are a lot of people who listen who are massive fans of this, mm. the, the, the the manga and the anime and et cetera. If I could put aside my character, guy who knows everything about anime. You may. I don't know anything about this property other than mm. he's got a straw hat and he's always running in. Yeah. Also, it is fast. The, the thing that I find fascinating is all I really know about One Piece is it's one of, I think it might be the longest running, it may be the longest running Manga, yeah, or close to, yeah. uh, of all time, mm. and it's being made by Netflix, who are going to cancel this series yeah. after one season, no matter what. And also, like, so gonna, who's gonna who is wants it gonna this? look like like a lot of the other Netflix stuff, mm. i.e., like shit? <laughs> it's, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, there's that weird look. Yeah, I can't even. It's got a color, weird color yeah. tone to it. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I mean, I come. I, I'm saying this from the perspective of somebody who liked. Um, Cowboy Bebop, the, yeah, the, sure. the Netflix series. Well, not but. everybody hated that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, you did. I did. Didn't? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I haven't got any more, but if you've got any more. I don't have any more. Well, let's, let's shut up. <laughs> let's, can I finish? Yeah. The, I'll, I'll, I'll end the show and then we'll shut then up. Then we'll shut up. Thank God we can finally shut up. Yeah. Folks, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We really appreciate it. We wouldn't be here without the wonderful listeners. No. Nope. I mean, we might be, but there would be less I hate that equipment. they have that hold over us. Right? That power. <laughs> We're gonna get them. We're gonna we'll get them one at a time. We'll get them with bad opinions about One Piece. That'll get rid of a lot of the listener base, I think. Yep, and yep, then, yep. Then it's just the dregs. Uh, folks, thank you uh, for uh, subscribing to the podcast. Thank you for telling your friends about the podcast. That's right. Thank you for leaving a five star review on your podcast catcher of choice. You can just do it in app. It's wonderful that people can do that. And this if you is... do it, James reads them out. You better believe it. This one's from friend with two ends and two days. Uh, given us five stars, anything less, I will not be reading it out. Again, right. you can say literally anything. I'll read it out. That's as long true. As five stars. 50% family friendly. My favorite pod, pod by far would recommend to anybody who's into movies and fun banter and silly commentary. The host, James and myself, have great chemistry and expertly balanced humor and substance. It's also my kids' favorite pod, which is impressive, given I only let them listen when Mesa was speaking. Can't <laughs> say for certain what they'll think when they hear James for the first time. Thank you, friend. Very this welcome. from Beekeeper1000 who says, I love you. I love you. And that's Is he talking it. to his bees? I don't know. He's probably just talking to his bees, but it doesn't matter because he's given us five stars. That's right. It's irrelevant who you're talking to. That's exactly right. If you want to get into contact with the show, you can go to uh, weeklyplanetpod Weekly at gmail, at Facebook, or Twitter, or Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go ah. to the uh, Weekly Planet Podcast uh, subreddit and Discord where you can have some good time, fun, and civil discussions about podcast and pop culture. Thank you to uh, Sarabi and Maisie Ooh. and Fidel uh, for uh, for doing for doing all the uh, the admin. How do they do it? Uh, computers, I think. Yeah, it's probably a computer. Yeah, it's probably, They're a, probably a shared computer that we sent them. That's exactly right. In bits. Yes. That do assemble themselves. <laughs> uh, thank you then for the doing doing all the great mod stuff that Definitely. they do. Uh, if you want to follow some people on the socials, first follow our friend Rob Collings who edits this podcast and makes videos and does all sorts of social media stuff, uh, keeping this, keeping all the Weekly Planet news in your feed. You can follow him at... Keeping Ro- the ducks in a row. Keeping all those ducks in a row. Mm-hmm. At Raw Collings on Twitter, at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown. You can follow me on Instagram at Nick Maso. James is Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. All Ooh. this is in the episode description. You can just... You can just 
Give it the old click a Have a look. Give it the old click a Tell us what you I'm think concerned. of it. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck or an amount you would not miss. Or you can go to bigsandwich.co. Sign up for nine US dollars per month. You get bonus Woo! podcasts. You get movie commentaries. You get early videos. You get video game Let's Plays. What a time we're having over there, James. What I completely agree. It's, and there's so much content, Mason. So much content. I love content. Yeah. Uh, if you want to buy some T-shirts, you can go to uh, tpublic.com. Search for The Weekly yeah. Planet. You'd buy any T-shirts over there, I reckon. Name one. Weekly Planet. That t-shirt. one's there, yep. Yeah, nice. That's it. There's yeah. just one. Yep. Nice. Yeah, get him fast. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rack and for all our musical themes. Next week, what's happening next week? It's a bit another big movie, isn't it? Uh, no, week after is Mission Impossible. Next oh, yeah. week, we will do Snake Eyes, things we didn't get to it this week. I love that. We ran a little long on Indiana Jones. No, that's true. So, uh, mm. get you. I mean, people have already watched it, but if you want to give it a read, get your copy ready. Yeah. 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 It's on Paramount Plus, probably. <laughs> probably. Netflix, it's probably on everything. Yeah. But it's on everything. Get in there before they do that inevitable Transformers crossover. That's exactly right. With all the right. characters from Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes. Yep. Storm Shadow. A girl. Is Mission Impossible not out this week? No. Isn't I think it? it is. I think it's ju- isn't it July five or something? July five. You wish. You wish Mason. Yeah. Is yeah, it? Matt. I think it might be. That says twelve, but I think we're getting it early in Australia. Um Walk the Red Carpet, Monday, June th- July third. Oh, oh, we well, missed I'm, that, didn't we? Well, I'm thinking about something else then, maybe. Well, no, it's because they're doing the the tour. Uh, so they're going he's pro- Tom Cruise has probably already left Australia. We could we could talk Release about release date Saturday eighth of July. Okay, so we could see it early. Could see it early. Yeah, so but, here we go. So here we we'll go. do snake. We got to do snake eyes though. Yeah, so. we might do Mission Impossible next week, but probably not. Because maybe not everybody will get a chance to well, see it. Definitely. Tell you what, what you should do: buy your tickets for Mission Impossible and yep. then watch Snake Eyes in the theater. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. All right, thanks everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. And goodbye. Bye bye.